such emotions. There I am. Okay, what's going on, night timers? Uh, a little behind on that one. All right, <clears throat> it's been a while. I took a week off. I was not on last weekend, celebrating the new year, and just kind of having a little space to kind of just just re re you know recharge the batteries, refocus. And uh, I'll be goddamned if I, I didn't get into a um, another Dawn of the Dead ob obsessive phase. So I decided that the first episode of 2024, happy 2024, everybody. The first. Uh, First episode of the uh, Saturday Night Stream will be a Dawn of the Dead retrospective. And I couldn't figure out. I was like, you know, what kind of retrospective could I do? Because God knows I could talk about Dawn of the Dead endlessly for hours. Any subject whatsoever. <laughs> like, that's, you know, that's what we do. But uh, just gotten, I, I, saw, I saw some YouTube videos. I read some articles here lately just, you know, asking why... You know, just talking about Dawn on, on physical media, why there aren't a lot of releases out there. And, and you know, as it's pretty well documented, the, the last release of Dawn of the Dead here in the United States was 17 years ago now. So, and that was just a regular Blu-ray, pretty much ported over from the, the DVD that Anchor Bay uh, put out back in 2004. Yeah, 2004, I think, was when they did that um, Divi Max release of dawn they did the box set and then eventually they brought it out on blu-ray um so i decided let's go back and look through the history of dawn of the dead on home video going all the way back to uh to the very first release this bad boy back here the thorny am i uh betamax and vhs release from 1983 we're gonna go from there go all the way up now i do have quite a few of these releases so this is also a good opportunity for me to show off my shit uh, do a little show and tell, because um, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it, well, you know, you buy this stuff and you collect it, and it just kind of, you know, just kind of sits around, and and you appreciate it, you know. That's why you know you, you know, that's why you collect things. I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but that's why I collect things. It's because I like to be surrounded by shit that I like, shit that I'm into, shit that I'm comfortable around. Um, but it doesn't seem like anybody else is. Maybe one or two people that I know, but pretty much everybody else they come up here and they're like, "What the fuck's going on here?" Um, but you know, it gives me an opportunity to kind of go through, look at these, you know, I have quite a few of these, some of them I don't, uh, I'll go ahead and say up front, the, uh, any Betamax or laser disc releases I don't own. Uh, I, I've never, I didn't grow up a huge beta or laser. That was just not my, you know, I just wasn't in my stratosphere, uh, back in the day. I was younger at the time when those were, I mean, I completely missed out on Betamax. I don't think I was born when Betamax was really a thing, but Laserdisc was always kind of never on my radar as a kid. We were, we were just, you know, poor white trash, from Western Kentucky. We just had an old VCR and, and most of the time we wouldn't even buy the fucking videos. You know, the first, um, edition of Dawn of the Dead that I owned was actually, um, recorded off of, uh, IFC. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so most of the movies that I had back in the day were just recorded off TV or, you, you know, you could, you know, stack the two VCRs on top of each other and, and, you know, record straight off of another VHS. Um, but, uh, you know, I've collected quite a few over the years. We're just doing the United States tonight. If we go into international stuff, if we start looking at, 
Jesus, Italy, Germany, France, Japan. I mean, we'd be here till tomorrow morning easily. There's so much out there, especially overseas. And, you know, going through doing this, uh, you know, doing research and looking at, you know, when things came out and what, what has come out here in the States. We've had quite a few releases of Dawn here in the States, too, um, you know, dating all the way back to 83. It just, it's recent here recently, recent memory. It, it just uh, I don't know what's going on with Rubenstein and, and, and why he's kind of holding these you know, this, you know, Dawn of the Dead and Martin, why, why they're being held hostage, it, it seems like. Um Hell, I even heard, I think it was Michael Felcher, Red Shirt Pictures, you know, worked on any DVD or Blu-ray release of George Romero. I mean, Felcher, you know, worked on the special features and he was on Dead Pit the other night and he was talking about, uh, you know, the Martin release, the second site put out over in the UK. Um, was it earlier this year? Was it this year? Yeah, it was this year. Um, and why, you know, why didn't it look... Not the best. It still looked a little rough around the edges, even with a 4K scan. And uh, apparently that, that 4K scan didn't come from the actual uh, camera negative that Richard Rubenstein has the rights to and still holds and apparently wouldn't come up off of it. So I don't know if he's just holding this stuff out because, I mean, that second sight release was a UK release. So that's completely different than here in the United States. So I don't know if he's holding out. I, from what I've understood, I don't even want to get into this too deep tonight because it's just kind of... It's it's been beaten to death by everybody at this point, but uh, <clears throat> just from what I've heard and what I've, I've understood, it, I think Rubenstein's looking for a lot of money for Don and for the rights to Dawn of the Dead and Martin here in the United States to put it out on it. Because, like I said, I mean, we we're, we're do the last release of Martin in the United States was a DVD. It doesn't even have a Blu-ray release here in the United States. Um, so unless you're buying it from overseas, uh, which that second site set, you know, say what you will about the transfer or whatever, it's still an amazing fucking set. The artwork, the special features, there's a, a full length, um, like behind the scenes retrospective documentary on there, that was, which was absolutely amazing. Um, that's the one you'd want to get. But here in the United States, we haven't gotten anything from, from Martin. We haven't gotten anything from Don, like I said, in 17 years. And for Martin, it's been 20, 20 at this point. So from what I understand, I guess Rubenstein's just kind of looking to package those two together to a company. So if a company wants Dawn of the Dead, they have to buy Martin and vice versa. And he wants a shitload of money for it. So I, I don't know what the end game is there for 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 old Richard Rubenstein. But um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll 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 dig into that a lot more here tonight as well. Uh, checking the chat. We got a busy chat in here already. Uh, Grande's graveyard. Oh yeah, and your Randy Savage uh, impersonation. Oh yeah, brother, dig it. Grande's in the house. What's up, my man? Uh, let's see. Uh, very excited. Happy Saturday, Alpha. Happy Saturday, Grande. Uh, glad to have you in here, man. I always catch your uh, your streams. You did another good one the other night on the uh, the Jalo. A lot of those I hadn't seen. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm a little behind on a lot of the the more obscure uh, Jalo titles, um, but uh, but uh, good to have you in here. We got Synth Attic in the house tonight. What's up, man? This dude, <clears throat> if you're at all into synthesizer music, you know, elect electronic music, whatsoever, this dude does some amazing streams. I was, you know, I ch I check in on him every now and then because it's really not my you know, uh, expertise, uh, the, the, like I, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say I'm a musician, but I do, I have played music in the past. I've, I've played drums in a band, guitar, bass, I, you know, I can do all that, but the electronic stuff I've always been so, so fascinated by. And, uh, it's really fascinating stuff, what you do on there. So I really appreciate it, but yeah, I've always been a big fan of it. Like, you know, Depeche Mode is one of my all-time favorite bands, craft work. You know, I grew up on that kind of stuff. And I've always just been, like, just in awe. Like, people who can play the fucking piano, is, are, you know, puts me in awe. So what, watching you do what you do on those streams is pretty awesome. Um, but, yeah, we whipped them, whipped them good on one of my all-time favorite lines. And, and I, that is a, <clears throat> that was a really good uh, uh, cover there. It, I'll put the uh, the link to the band in, in, the, uh, in the description if you guys want to check them out. But, yeah. Uh, you see decent goblin cover here. I was just watching Tenebrae. Yeah, Tenebrae was one that uh, Grande was talking about on the stream the other night. That's probably my favorite uh, Jello of all time is Tenebrae. I fucking love that movie. It's so different than 
you know, a lot of the other Jallos from like the late sixties, early seventies, but it was definitely like, a, <clears throat> to me, I feel like Tenebrae is kind of a bridge between like the 80s slasher craze and the Jallo stuff in, in Italy. And it was like a bridge there. It was it kind of blended the two because it's very bloody, very, uh, very slashery at times, which I mean, Jallos are just, you know, what, you know, <laughs> what, what, what do people call it? Spaghetti flavor slasher or whatever. But uh, anyway, yeah, love Tenebrae, love Tenebrae. Uh, AI Neary, or is it Al Neary? I, I can't get you. It's Al Neary. Okay, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> first time I dubbed the copies of uh, rental tapes onto a blank cassette, I compiled, three, I compiled three films on one, Dawn of the Dead, Strange Brew, and Enter the Dragon, weirdest dub ever. What was on my first one? Because I recorded it off of IFC when they played the director's cut on IFC. It wasn't the first time I had seen Dawn of the Dead. I had rented it. But the first time I actually like owned a copy and like watched it over and over and over again was the on IF, I recorded off IFC. It was probably 2000-ish, somewhere around there. But I think it had it had Document of the Dead on it. I do know that because they premiered Document of the Dead on IFC that same weekend or whatever. It was like the weekend of uh, Halloween when they were doing their, uh, what do they call it, uh, independent screams or something like that. Indie screams, I think. And uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I believe. So, yeah, not as weird as yours. <laughs> definitely definitely a weird, uh, weirdest dub, but... Uh, but good to see you in here, man. Glad to have you on here. Uh, let's see. Synthetic says, Alan Neary had Dawn of the Dead and Evil Dead on the same tape in SLP mode. Very cool. Let's see. Granny says, so stoked for this. I am too, man. Like I said, I, I've fallen down the Dawn rabbit hole, which happens like 10 times a year. Um, but every now and then I'll, you know, I'll shift my fuck. I'm like, oh, I'd be, I'm really interested in Santa Claus. I'm kind of, you know, it's Christmas and, and, and that passed really quickly. And then we're back on to uh, bigger and better things here with Dawn of the Dead. Uh, Al Neary says, Don is the first rental cassette I ever got. Um, wasn't my first rental, but I definitely, and we'll talk about it. I definitely remember the first time I rented Don of the Dead. Um, let's see, Synth Attic says, someone is now hosting the theatrical cut of Don of the Dead 78 on YouTube, a 4K rip. Yeah, they're all over the place, man. There's, I think I've seen every cut of Don of the Dead on YouTube. And that's the amazing thing too, is like Don's not available for streaming really anywhere. Rubenstein really hasn't put it out on, you know, Netflix or anything like that. I think overseas, I think maybe in the UK it's on Amazon or something like that, but here in the States, you can't find it um, on any kind of streaming platform. So it's really weird that he would, you know, not even, you know, you know, put it out on you know streaming, you know, but you can find it all over fucking uh, YouTube. Uh, I've done it. <laughs> so I know. Um, See, the beta should have won over VHS as period format. I've always heard that. But like I said, I've never never been huge on beta. I don't own any beta. Um, I don't own any Laserdisc either. And Laserdisc is obviously a superior format to VHS. and really was the precursor to DVD. I think it was just, they were so big. And it was at a time when like, you know, vinyl records had already kind of phased out and people had moved on to cassettes mostly at that time. But CDs had also kind of started to take off. And that was like the big thing. But, and I think when people would compare like, at that time, you know, like early night, early to mid nineties and people would see like a CD and be like, Oh, this is awesome. It's small. It's compact, you know? And, and then they see those giant ass laser discs and it just reminded people of like, Oh, those fucking records those big ass records, which now records sell more than CDs. So, um, which as you can see, I have quite a few and I really, I don't, I haven't, I haven't bought it. Well, the last CD I bought was probably something Romero related. Like I bought the Knight Rider soundtrack on CD a couple of years back. Uh, that Donald Rubenstein, Don reimagined um, sound, you know, where, where you know, Rubenstein was originally supposed to do the soundtrack to Dawn of the Dead. And um, he released a CD with all those tracks years later. I bought that on CD because mostly if it's not available on vinyl, I'll buy it on CD. But yeah, I, I really, I don't even really buy a lot of vinyl anymore, to be honest with you. Because I know Waxwork just put out a, a Dawn of the Dead uh, soundtrack um, release you know, a couple weeks ago or whatever it was now. And I had just no interest in it. I don't know why I bought the, the first one that they put out where, you know, the goblin soundtrack, but I guess this one has like all the library music and stuff too. And it, it looks great. I mean, it looks amazing. Like there's a part of me, it's like, Oh, FOMO, you know, I'm, I, you know maybe we should have picked that one up. Cause it's try to buy it now. I think it's out of, you know, I, I think waxwork isn't selling it anymore, but if you see it on eBay now, it's like 120, $130, you know, at the lowest, you know, I've seen it even higher than that. Uh, Al Neary says the Thorn EMI tape was my first exposure on video. That was mine as well. 
Um, those were everywhere at every video store, except for like Blockbuster. I had never saw it at Blockbuster, but like Movie Gallery, which is where I first saw it. Um, every mom and pop shop. I mean, the one that I got is is a, uh, a former rental copy. I, I bought it specifically for that. I mean, it's in kind of rough shape, but I mean, it's a former rental copy. Um, but the, you know, the copy that I bought and own now is a former rental copy, but I bought it just because it reminds me of, you know, the first time I rented it. Cause that's what I rented it on. I remember looking at the box and yeah, it's going to be a lot of nostalgia tonight, guys. So I'm just going to warn you guys ahead of time. <laughs> Hope you guys are cool with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, sent that a guy to buy the 4k, the UK 4k version last year, since it's the only hard copy you can buy of it. Nice box set. Yeah. I mean that, that box set of, you know, <clears throat> probably the ultimate edition of Dawn of the Dead that you can buy anywhere. I mean, Italy's done quite a few. France has done a couple of really good releases. Um, Germany's done, you know, a couple of nice releases. Of course, you can get the ultimate cut or whatever overseas. You know, uh, there's some, so many cool releases overseas that it's, it really, you know, really sucks that, you know, <laughs> we've gotten so little here in the United States, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see if I lost my plays. Try to go through these real quick. I got a couple, couple of topics here we'll get into before we uh, start pulling out the pulling out the hardware. Uh, Alan Neary says, uh, last I checked, pretty much every publicly released cut was posted on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Grande says, Dick Rubenstein stinks. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I did that stream, you know, a couple months ago, you know, talking about, you know, Rubenstein Romero's relationship and, and how important I think Rubenstein was to George's career and how important he is. You know, when we talked about, you know, his his uh, wife passing away last year, Catherine Colbert, um, you know, I, 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 it's it, it's easy to have ill feelings towards Richard Rubenstein. But at the same time, you got to remind yourself, like, none of this would have happened without him. Um, so, I mean, without Richard Rubenstein, you know, George, you know, it's like we, it's like I've talked about before. It's just like, you know, those young up and coming filmmakers, you know, they make big hit and they just kind of fizzle out. That would have been George in the mid seventies if it wasn't for Richard Rubenstein after the, you know, the crazies lack of success. He's no the witch lack of success. I mean, George was just kind of like yesterday's news and nobody cared anymore. And he was in a shitload of debt. Um, but luckily, you know, Richard Rubenstein kind of helped him come out of that and, and George's career, you know, revitalized his career and he moved on to bigger and better things. And and that's one of the amazing things about George I always think about is how many times he he did that because it happened to him again in the 90s. You know, me and me and you talked about it, Grande, uh, on your channel. You know, Romero in the 90s had there were so many start and stops. I mean, he finished filming Dark Half in 91, didn't make another film until 99. So it was an eight year period there where George didn't do shit except write scripts and get rejected and start something and then it didn't work out and it was just like he could have easily just you know pulled a john carpenter and started uh you know smoking pot and playing video games and said fuck it um but he didn't he, and say what you want about you know the last you know three or four of george's films but dude wouldn't stop that's what he loved to do and that's what he did he loved he loved being on set loved making films and uh wouldn't let anything hold him back or hold him down uh, let's see, Grande, hold Romero's two best movies hostage. I'd agreed, yeah. And, you, I mean, we assume that it's greed. We don't know if there's an actual, if there's a plan in place or if he's just, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, th that's the most obvious thing. Why someone would do that is, is not agreed, but. Uh, let's see, synthetic things, man. I even cover some John Carpenter and Goblin once in a while. Uh, I think I... I'll have to look that up, man. I feel like because I've, I've looked, I've, I've watched quite a few of your your videos on there. I can't remember uh, what was the one I watched. The other day. Anyway, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look that up, man. I'll check that out because that, that's like I said, it's it's fascinating shit to me. Uh, Santa Claus watch stream was hilarious. What term? Yeah, I mean, and, and that eggnog was just as bad, <laughs> but it did the trick. I was feeling pretty good by the end of it, and that, as good as you can feel after you know, watching Santa Claus as good as you can feel at the end of a movie like that, I guess. Um, uh, let's see, Al Neary. Uh, I'm hanging on to my Anchor Bay box DVD. Yeah. Yeah. That that's in the U S that's the ultimate. Even I would, you know, even past the Blu-ray because the Blu-ray itself doesn't look that great. Uh, but it, you know, it's one of the early Blu-rays, um, strongly value physical media. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, there's been a lot of news here lately about, you know, 
certain streaming services charging extra to, you know, if you want to watch a movie and you don't want to watch it with fucking commercials, they're going to charge you extra. And there's some that are just losing the rights to shit altogether. So if you bought a movie digitally, whatever the fuck that means, um, you don't own it anymore. But if you actually buy it and you own it, nobody's going to be, nobody's going to lose the rights and you're not going to lose the rights to having a fucking movie. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's retarded. I mean, I, I get like, you know, I, most people don't give a shit. They're just like, Hey, whatever, you know, it's on, it's on, it's on, you know, I'll watch it. But for people who actually love film and shit, like, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't try to, you know, physically own a lot of this shit just for no other reason, just to have it, to watch it whenever you want. You know, you got to worry about anybody losing rights or anything like that. Uh, let's see. If you want to see the Goblin live in their first North American tour ever, I saw them in San Francisco in 2013, and some guy recorded most of it. Okay, so you got, there's a link in there if you want to check that out. Track of movie clips. Yeah, I've seen them tour. I've seen them where they've been going on tour a lot lately for different movies. I think this year or last year now they did uh, Demons. Demons. Yeah, the Demons soundtrack, you know, with the movie playing in the background. I would love to have caught that, but they were playing, the closest they were playing was like Indianapolis or something like that, and it was on like a Wednesday night, and I was just like, man, that's just not going to work. And of course, that's the type of thinking that, you know, you'll go back and regret, and it's like, fuck, I had my opportunity to see Goblin, which it's not the actual full band Goblin back in the day. There's been like two different versions of Goblin over the years of climbing Claudio Simonetti and, um, and the other version, I, it's it's confusing if you're not paying attention. Um, let's see, we'll go through and then we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, 1911 Guitar Dude, what's up, man? Good to see you in here. I started Dawn uh, with VHS and DVD, then got a, uh, what does that say? LD player. So I have special features only available there until, uh, maybe I read that wrong. Hang on. Let me, blah, 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 blah. Let, me re re let me restart there. Then I got a, um, LD, I can't hardly see it. It's a fucking small screen on here, guys. I apologize. <laughs> so I could have special features only available there until we got some awesome Ultimate Edition DVD. So are you, are you saying you got a region free player? I'm a little confused, man. <laughs> a little confused. A little confused. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the whole reason that I, you know, even bought a region free player to begin with was when Italy put out that midnight factory set and it had the full frame, uh, unmatted version of Dawn on there. And I had to see that. And I was just like, fuck it. it, it I've put it off for so long. It's time for me to get a region free player and, and pick this up. And yeah, it was worth it. So, so basically I spent about 300 bucks to, uh, to be, to have the capability to see that. I think, yeah, I think the player was about uh, two, about 200. And I think the actual, box set was like a hundred or something when I bought it because it was after the fact. I mean, it was already, you know, I think I got it off eBay. Uh, let's see. Uh, synthetic right after the tour, the band broke up and toured the next. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I'm trying to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Musicians. Yeah. Uh, yes. And the uh, physical media rules or good downloaded digital copies. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, if you actually have, if you, where you can download it and you, you can put it on a disc or keep it on a, you know, thumb drive or something like that. Yeah, that, that'd be the way to go. Uh, John's in the house. What's up, man? Good to see you in here. Laser disc. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the laser disc uh, releases. I don't own any of them, like I was saying earlier. Uh, oh, okay. You're talking about uh, laser disc player. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm way out there. But yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't have any of the laser disc releases. So we'll, we'll, we're still going to talk about them and, uh, you know, discuss, you know, what they were at the time, but yeah, that, that, that's one thing about Laserdisc too. Um, from back in the day, it was the first time that we actually got like special features and commentaries and um, stuff like that. So, like the first time I heard, and it was weird because it was so confusing to me at the time. But the first time I heard the the Night of the Living Dead, I think it was the Elite Entertainment release, not the. I think it was Elite. It's the one with, with the cartoon-looking version of uh, Kyra Schoen on it. Um, 
when I first bought that and had those two commentaries on there with like all the cast and crew, and I was just like, man, these these are awesome. When was this recorded? And you hear them mention shit from like the early nineties, and I'm like, God, this was recorded a long time ago, or you know, I don't. When did this DVD come out? Were there DVDs back then? And I was just really confused. I looked it up, and now you know, it's like, oh shit, all this stuff was on Laserdisc time. Because like I said back in the day, you know, like I said, I was a little young to appreciate Laserdisc or understand the point of it. Um. So, yeah, I, I just don't have really uh, any, I guess, sentimental uh, attachment to Laserdisc or nostalgia connected to it. Like I do VHS and DVD and shit like that. Uh, John says, uh, I bought the Italian zombie 4K release for the full frame. Yeah, but then I ripped it to an uncompressed MKV file and I keep it on a USB. It's a good idea. Um, I, have, I have it on multiple copies now because I also released it on that... It was on that Italian box set, and I think it was also included on the German. I got them up here. I'm trying to see which ones. So I got... I think it's on... Yeah, so I got a German set here. I think it's on here, if I'm not mistaken. Uncut Argento. Argento. I know for sure it's on this French box set I got up here, but... It's really, it's really weird. It's you know, it's it's definitely something for a, a hardcore fan like I'm sure all of us are. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend checking it out or fucking hit up John here and see if he can send you the file. <laughs> but uh, it's really weird because it's like you see like shit in plain sight. It's like there's the boom operator, uh, you know, Robert Williams over here in the corner. He's holding the boom, and it's just like in full frame, and he's just standing there. It's that scene where they're in the uh, J.C. Penney's and they're wheeling, you know doing all that it's it's uh it is really really interesting if you're really interested in like really looking at like all the little details and seeing like oh i've never seen that before i've never seen that before do people do that i thought about this the other day do people do this shit with other films like i don't know there's just something about don like like i know there are hardcore like evil dead fans i know they're hardcore halloween fans and texas chainsaw fans do they really dig into like all the minutiae you know, like like we do with with Don and Romero and Knight and all that, because it's 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 weird. I couldn't picture ever. I couldn't imagine ever caring, but especially with something like you know Star Wars or something. I know there's hardcore Star Wars fans out there, and I you know I, I understand it's their thing, but I could never understand being like, oh, I've got to get this, I got to get a region free Blu-ray player so I can get this Blu-ray of Star Wars where you can see like an inch of extra shit on the side. You know, <laughs> it's just like I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I was just, you know, thinking about that the other day. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I know people have been buying a Japanese version with the full frame, but I don't know why, because I don't think it's that much different. Yeah. I saw something about that the other day. Uh, a buddy of mine, Paul on, uh, I think it was one of the Dawn of the Dead pages on Facebook or something like that. had posted something about it. And that thing, that sucker's going for a shitload of money right now. I looked it up. Um, and right now uh, you can find it on eBay for, I mean, some, some places are trying to get rid of it for like 200 bucks or something right now. And it's just like, God, I couldn't, couldn't do it. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, except there's some, you know, the, you know, cracks and pops and you can see like, you know, where they you know, splice, uh, you know, that type of stuff. But yeah, it's it pretty much looked like the same thing, but uh, that's what I think I asked him about. I was like, well, what's, what's, what's different about those two, you know, Sorry, the uh, the Italian release of the full frame in this one. He's like, not much. It's just, you know, there's something about uh, the font on the credits or something like that. I'm not not that too uh, particular. But anytime you can see Dawn of the Dead with something different, it's always just like, wow. Uh, even there's just like a Japanese dub, like a TV Japanese dub or something like that. Uh, that's available on YouTube somewhere that if you find it. I'll watch that because the soundtrack is completely different. It's still Goblin, but they use like uh, like tracks from Suspiria and stuff in it instead of the actual Dawn. And it's it's just so weird and so out there. Um, and it's all in Japanese. So you, I mean, if you've seen Dawn of the Dead as much as you know we have, I mean, it's you, you can recite every bit of dialogue as you're watching, so you really don't even understand it or have to understand it. I mean, uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, let me. Uh, 
ERIs in house. What's up? I have that same eight by ten signed by Howard Sherman. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, I, that was one of the first things I ever got signed at a convention. Had to meet Howard Sherman. I'm such a huge fan of uh, of Bub and his performances, Bub. Uh, since they're unrelated, but have you ever seen the Night of the Living Dead audio spoof alternate soundtrack called Night of the Day of the Dawn of the Sun of the Pride, the Return of the Terror? Um, I don't think I have. I don't think I've seen that one. Um, I have heard of it. I have heard of that, but I, I don't think I've seen I actually, I think I saw that available on like VHS or DVD or something like that on eBay uh, maybe a year or so ago. And I was like, oh, that'd be something I don't have, something I could look for, but um no, haven't checked that. I have seen like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 type uh, riff tracks, what they called it. They did that at a local theater years ago for Halloween with Night of the Living Dead. I've told that story in here before and how it kind of backfired at the end because at the beginning, you know, a lot of people in there hadn't seen Night of the Living Dead and really didn't, you know, weren't connected to it in any way or really had anything to, you know. But they were there for, you know, fun, like, oh, let's laugh at this old black and white movie, this old, low budget, cheesy black and white movie. And then by the end of it, people were just like, oh, my God, like when they kill Ben at the end, the fucking girl next to me, I, there are these two women there that were there just, you know, just probably having a girl's night out. Or I was like, oh, let's go see this corny, you know, horror movie from years ago and listen to these people make fun of it. And by the end of it, like when they when they shoot Ben, this fucking girl next to me is just like, oh, my God. It just clutched your pearls. It was like, oh my God. And I was like, yeah, that ending still works. Um, so that was fun. Um, uh, let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Here's John talking about the Japanese version is a special TV version released in 1980. I love that version, but it can never be released because I don't think it exists. Yeah, but it's on YouTube. Um, I, I, I literally watched that entire thing one time and, and it uses that, uh, I kind of like it the way that they use some of that goblin soundtrack it's the, from Suspiria, where it's like boom, 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 boom. What is that track called? It's not, uh, it's, it's not which I can't think what it's called, but, um, but yeah, some of it is interesting, but a lot of it's just like, whoa, why would they do that? <laughs> King Gore in the house. Good evening, sir. Good to see you in here. Uh, let's see. One other thing, you can find that Night of Living Dead with on YouTube, silly but fun in parts. Okay, we'll, we'll check that out. We'll check that out. Uh, all right, all right. So before we get started on these physical media releases, I posted a. This is an interesting topic. Got me thinking. Um, I posted a, a poll um, last week, I believe, about what your preferred cut of Dawn of the Dead was, and uh, the. Mm, who won? I think the ultimate cut eventually won, which the ultimate cut is, I think it was originally in Germany. Somebody put it together with like, you know, it was probably the late nineties. I want to say uh, where they compiled all the footage from the theatrical version, the director's cut or the cans cut and the Italian version and created this 156 minute uh, cut. I believe I remember seeing that on eBay like in early 2000s when I was first like really getting into this stuff. And oh man, I wish I could go back to those days on eBay because everything was so fucking cheap. Like I remember seeing the Dawn of the Dead board game, which I eventually bought, but I have I dropped like 150 bucks or something for it. But I remember seeing it on eBay back in the day and it was like $25 or something like that. And at the time, I mean, I was like, you know, 13, 14 years old. And I was like, oh, $25, that's a lot of money. <laughs> now I would be like, God damn, buy, give me two. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you can, you can find, uh, it's, it's rare to find that red version, but the, there, there's similar versions to that that exist out there. I mean, there's, uh, physical releases of it overseas now at this point. So you can find it. It's out there. If you, if you want to see, and I actually believe it's available on YouTube as well. Uh, if you find, if you look up, um, uh, I know it's over the years, there's been like the ultimate cut, the extended mall hours cut, um, which was the first time I actually saw that it was called the extended mall hours cut, but it's out there. You can find it and it re just really compiles every foot, every bit of footage. It, does, it doesn't have all the footage. If you actually, I was actually looking at, uh, at John. Um, I was looking at your channel the other night, watching all the, all the footage that's not in any cut of Dawn of the Dead. If you guys want to check that out, go check out John's channel. He's got it on there. He's compiled all the footage from, there was like a, 
uh, right before Dawn of the Dead came out, there was like a, it was, a, I think it was a local Pittsburgh show where they were talking about Dawn of the Dead and George was on there talking about it. And they used a lot of like uh, extra footage that was never included in any cut of Dawn of the Dead. They used alternate takes um, on that show. And it was the first time you've seen any of this stuff. Um, but all the footage, you know, it creates the ultimate cut. And that's what won the poll. And I think, obviously, I think if you're a huge George fan or a huge Romero fan, um, or a huge Dawn fan, I should say, um, that would probably be your preferred cut because you can sit for two and a half hours and watch everything and watch it as complete as possible. Some of the music cues are a little off. Some of the, you know, it's a little wonky here and there, but, um, but I think my favorite cut is the cans cut because I feel like that's the, <clears throat> the best version to watch. Like if you're showing it to somebody for the first time, I think that's the version to go to go with, because I mean, the extra footage that's in there adds to the story. It adds to the characters. Um, it's just, and that, that was the the cut that I grew up watching over and over and over again. And um, so I guess that's probably, you know, more of a nostalgic sentimental thing for me as well. But I could honestly thinking about it. I could honestly make a case for every single cut of Dawn of the Dead as being the best, cut because the theatrical cut while the cans cut is you know promoted marketed as the director's cut a lot of the times which we'll see um george has always said that the theatrical cut was his preferred version of dawn of the dead um i've heard him say that multiple times in interviews and commentaries so there's you know and that's the version that went out in theaters and that's the version everybody saw for the first time unless you were at that you know um at that festival the cans festival that year um, which the cans cut was technically just the cut that Romero threw together. Uh, didn't throw it together. I mean, he would just like, oh, we'll just throw this shit together and get it out of here. But just like the one that was like the most complete that he could send off to the festival um, could take two cans, which is why it's called the cans cut. Um, but his preferred version is the theatrical cut. So you can make the argument and there are musical cues in the theatrical version that I prefer. Um, like when they, like in the cans cut, when they when you first cut to the shot on the mall from the helicopter over over uh, over top of the mall, in 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 the cans cut, it's just kind of like it's just kind of the music. There's not a there's not a moment to it, you know what I mean? Whereas in the theatrical cut, it's like boom 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 boom, and it, that music just adds something extra to that scene to me. There's a couple of instances like that in the theatrical version that I prefer, like the opening credit sequence. I like the music in that better. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can make uh, you can make the argument for for the theatrical cut easily. Um, the cans cut, like I said, that's just my preferred cut. And if I'm showing it to somebody for the first time, that's probably the version I want to see. And some people say it's that version's a little slower at times, especially because you got that second um, shopping montage. Um, but I think, I, I think you gotta have that in that film for some reason. It just works because at that point in the film, that second shopping montage or whatever you want to call it, they're all just kind of, it's not the same, you know, you get the, you know, Steven on the couch and he takes Fran's picture and Fran's just like, uh, Oh great. And when you're finished with the role, we'll drop it off the drugstore. It's like, nobody's having real, nobody's really having fun with this anymore. They're all every reality is kind of starting to set in again. Like, yeah, we got all this shit, but the fuck, are we gonna do with it? Like, what? You know, what? What's the point? You know, and you can kind of see the, the deterioration of the characters a little more in that cut to me, and that's why I prefer it. I, I think it adds a little more to the characters. It adds more to the story. Um, the loading dock scene, um, or not loading dock, but the uh, uh, the boat dock scene with the with the police, Joe Pilato, and. Uh, and uh, Molly McCloskey's brother and, and those characters, I think that adds to it because for some reason the theatrical version, it just feels way too choppy and weird. Like they just get, it's like they just show up to get in the helicopter and go. I feel like the extra, the police in that scene kind of add to it. Um, so yeah, I, I just prefer that cut, but the Italian version, <clears throat> I don't think hardly anybody gave it a vote. I think it got like 7% and there's a lot of people that voted. I mean, it was a, it's a pretty good turnout on the vote. Um, I just think over in the, in the U S we grew up, so accustomed to one version of Dawn of the Dead that Argento's version was just so different and so out of left field. I think it just threw people for a loop, but I will say that there are parts of it that I do like. I like some of the extra footage. Like I liked a little bit of dialogue where Flyboy's talking about like, Oh, you know, we, we knocked the shit out of them today. And, and, and 
Peter kind of has to rein him in. It's like, dude, you know, lady, well, what, what, what are you going to do when the lady gets killed? You're going to be able to chop her head off. And it's just kind of brings, you know, little, little bit extra bits of that. Uh, I kind of enjoy, um, some of the music cues in that I'm not a huge fan of, but I think the best, I, I like when the bikers raid the mall and that, uh, however you pronounce that track, Zeratozom or whatever is called it. Um, Zer Zeratum. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just gibberish. I'm trying to speak Italian or whatever. Um, but I like that. I, the, I think that works really well for that scene. I think it almost works a little better than any of the U.S. cuts in that scene. Um, and you can say it, it, you know, it's a shorter version. It cuts out a lot of the, you know, the more character stuff. And, and the reason they did that over in the U.S. I mean, the United States does it as well when we get, uh, you know, a foreign film. We, we cut a lot of the, we try to cut as much dialogue out of it as possible so we don't have as much to either, you know, dub or subtitle. Keep it, you know, keep the action closer together. And that's just kind of what Argento was doing over over in Italy, was just trying to make it focus more on the action as opposed to dialogue, characters, and shit like that, which, you know, to me, you lose a lot. But uh, I don't know. I just, it's, so it's a interesting conversation to have. You ask anybody, those opinions will change. I know people that will, you know, stand up. I know the dead pit guys will you know fight you about you know the theatrical cut is the only version to watch don't even bother with the other ones i know some people that are i know some weirdos that are just like the argento cuts the way to go i've heard that before so um but yeah that ultimate cuts pretty badass um i will say and i think it's the i wouldn't show that cut to somebody who hasn't seen the film before i will say that I tried the, the first time I tried to get my fiance to watch, I was like, we're going to watch the ultimate cut. Cause you're going to watch every goddamn bit of like footage from this film. Like, you're going to take it all in. And then like some of the, the weird music cues and stuff, I could see what's kind of throwing her off. Like, Oh, this music just changed dramatically all of a sudden. Um, and like, it's very long. It's two and a half hours long. I mean, it's, it's a, it's an epic. Um, so, but that's the cut. If you're, if, if you love Dawn of the Dead and you want to just immerse yourself in everything there is to be had in that film, that's the cut to do it. <clears throat> now I'm just waiting on somebody to take that extra footage on John's channel and just splice that into that version and add another five or 10 minutes and we'll have another, uh, we'll have a three hour version at some point, which I would watch that. I mean, even just the difference in quality and shit, like that'd be, I'd, I'd still sit and watch every bit of it and, and love it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let me uh, hit the chat here real quick, and we'll go ahead and get into these uh, get into these home video releases. Ah, da, 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 da. I don't know why I did that. Uh, let's see. Synthetic, the mall hours, the mall after hours cut. I think sort of like Star Wars despecialized editions. Yeah. Uh, where did I see uh, the extended mall hours cut? I think the first time I saw that was on like a. LimeWire or Winamax or one of those. And I was like, what, did the, what does that mean? So I downloaded it. It took back then when I first got it, it took hours and hours to download. <laughs> I was just like, come on, come on. Uh, let's see. Uh, John says of an interview George did um, the day uh, they premiered night on TV in Pittsburgh. Uh, okay. Yeah. For that extra footage you can check that out on there. Um, it premiered night on TV. Yeah, I guess that would have been around that time. Uh, but all those cuts aren't in any version of the film. They must exist on some real vault. Yeah, and I'm sure it's in Richard Rubenstein's basement or something somewhere. Uh, the Kings cut's pretty good, but messed up the score, though. Yeah, yep, yeah, I agree. Um, and we're getting some back and forth here between John and uh, Synthetic here. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, that's the thing, too. Um, there is Goblin in the Cans cut, but it's just, it's much less. Like, there's... Uh, there's like two, there's three tracks in it. Um, the Hunt, Zombie, and uh, The Dawn of the Dead. And I think that's it. I think, well, other than, you know, like the zombie voices and stuff. Um, G George did use that, but they, he didn't use like the alternate versions of the Dawn theme and stuff like that. And I love those. I mean, that's my favorite version of the Dawn of the Dead theme, I think. It's just that alternate, like, do, 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 do. Uh, that gets me hard when I <laughs> when I hear that, man. <clears throat> Not to be too graphic, but whatever. Uh, remember that can's cut is early. George kept working on it afterwards. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm a little behind, a little behind here. 
Uh, let's see. John says, I actually like the theatrical cut the least. Okay, that's interesting. I think some of the music George placed, uh, replaced Week in some scenes. Um, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I would definitely, I wouldn't say it's the one I like the least, but honestly, it's probably the one I watch the least. The one I watch the least, I would say. I mean, the Cans Cut's the version I go to when I want to just sit down and like watch the film and take it in again, where I just want to like immerse myself in the film. The Argento cuts the one I want to watch when I want to see like the different footage and some of the different music and, and I, the 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 sound effects in that version are better too. The gun sound effects, especially in the Argento version, um, some of the gunshots in that version are amazing. Um, and yeah, the ultimate cuts just want to when I when I just want to watch every goddamn thing and stop and look and you know that's the <laughs> when I want to get into my when I want to dissect it. That's what I that's when I watch. Uh, much more library music in the non-theatrical and the non-Argento cuts. Not always a good thing. Yeah, some of the, that's, and that's a thing too. I've heard people talk about in in terms of the soundtrack to Dawn of the Dead is some of the library music. Some people just don't like they they it, it kind of like like at the end when Peter you know decides not to shoot himself and he's like, da -da, da -da, da -da. Uh, I can see some people say like, oh God, that's corny, but you know, George loved it. Like that's, and you get that, it's what he would call like that John Wayne moment, you know, where Peter's, you know, coming to save the day or whatever. Um, so yeah, I could see that. I think I'm kind of with you on this. The more, more goblin, the better uh, for me. Uh, but I think just the wall to wall goblin, that's the good thing about, I guess that uh, in the, in the Argento cut it is it is wall to wall goblin. There's no library music in it whatsoever. I mean, there's some weird stuff here and there. Um, like some of the, um, like the the mall Muzak is is I think I, I don't think that was Goblin I think that was some kind of library track or something that they used but uh, but yeah I, it does give it more of a cohesive feel because Don you you'll go from one minute you'll you know it'll be like something like Goblin then all of a sudden it'll cut to you know uh, some you know, yeah now I'm just doing the Goblin soundtrack but you know what I'm saying like it, the the library music it, it, felt different at times um anyway we'll, we'll move on uh, da, 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 da. okay well, let's uh <clears throat> let's see that couple guys going back and forth here we got here billy goat am i the only person who can't stand day of the dead i love dawn and night hey i mean you were in the majority back in the day most people hated fucking day. i didn't like day of the dead when i first saw it I loved night and I loved dawn. And when I first saw day, I was like the opening, like 10 minutes, I was like, holy shit, this is going to be amazing. And then it was just like, mm, I don't, I don't like this. This is kind of not at all what I was expecting or wanting. Um, so yeah, but I, more and more, I mean, we talked, we've talked about it here recently. Like I've more and more people like day, uh, even more than dawn. That's their favorite day is their favorite, you know? And that's understandable, you know, I mean, day is, and we, when I, when I do these tier lists or I do my top 10 or we, we talk about day, like we always kind of come back to the fact that like, oh yeah, the best makeup effects of any Romero film are in day of the dead. The best zombie in any Romero film is in day of the dead. But I mean, in my opinion, the best zombie is Bub. just great performance from Howard Sherman. The soundtrack's amazing. The performances are amazing. Best villain. I mean, God, you can't be Joe Pilato as Captain Rhodes. Um, so really when you break it down and you think about it, it's like, yeah, that was, you know, that does kind of take the cake in a lot of categories. Um, but you know, I love day of the dead. I, I've come around on it. I've come to come to love it quite a bit, but it's, uh, it's not Dawn of the dead to me. Um, let me see. I'm gonna catch a couple more of these and we'll go ahead and get into it. Tenebrae has all the Dawn of the dead goblin music, not used in Dawn of the dead theatrical as background music. Yeah. Like when they're in the, uh, uh, the bar, uh, when, when the, the girl, he's like, Oh, the lesbians or whatever's going on there in the bar, they're playing the, the goblin music from Dawn of the Dead. And that, da, 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 da. I think that was the one I was doing a minute ago. This whole thing is just me mouthing music. Uh, Grind is just theatrical for me always. Okay. There we go. We got to vote for theatrical, uh, theatrical cut. Um, 
like I said, that was George's preferred cut. And speaking of Day of the Dead, that was George's favorite of his zombie films too. So uh, you can't go wrong with. It. I mean, you, that's that's an argument ender right there. If you're, you're if you're debating Day versus Dawn or whatever, and you're you're a Day of the Dead fan, you could always just end the fucking argument with, well, George, it was George's favorite. So who are you to say? <laughs> and they're like, well, I don't know, can't say anything else. Uh, and, oh, I did not know that I was going to watch Tenebrae recently, but didn't. I do love Goblin's Tenebrae track. It might actually be my favorite of theirs. Yeah, that's a great soundtrack as well. I have that on vinyl somewhere. I can't remember who put it out. I think it was Death Waltz or something, I think, put it out. But yeah, that's a great soundtrack. And there is some some Dawn music that they used in that as well. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Let me go through here. I'm unaware if the real George sent to Argento in April, May is 100% library. That's my holy grail. Yeah, that that would be the one because that's the, always been the question is like, what what did George send to Dario? Because when Dario did the cut, I mean, obviously the cut had to have been complete and Dario just kind of cut and pasted different stuff around. Um to kind of make up that Argento cut. So there has to be like some complete cut somewhere. And of course, Dario redid all the sound and soundtrack and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, now would the complete cut just be, do you think it would just be what we have as the ultimate cut, but with an actual full, you know, soundtrack and everything on it where it's not as choppy possibly, uh, but who knows? That may be a question. We'll never know. I mean, that's, that may be something that, uh, you know, that somebody has. And I don't, it would, I don't think it would be Rubenstein would have something like that. I don't think they would have made a bunch of copies of that. I think if that version does exist, it's either in an, a vault or somewhere in Italy, perhaps, uh, if, if they kept it. But then there's also the possibility that Argento just kind of cut what, he, you know, use that version, cut what he didn't want, you know, and redo it. And then all the extra, you know, the excess film just got tossed or something. You know, you never know. That would be, That'd be awful if that did happen, but just don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, any new names here? Uh, Cleveland Resale in the house. Hey, Mike, first time chiming in. How's it going, buddy? Jason here. What's up, Jason? Uh, glad you can make it in here. Now, this Is this your first live stream? I think I've seen you in here. Um, good to have you in here, man. It was good meeting you back at uh, Living Dead Weekend back in October, too. Uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, I certainly, I certainly, certainly did. That was an amazing trip. Just not even just Living Dead Weekend, but actually, actually being able to go to the Romero Archive at the University of Pittsburgh and 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 you know feast my eyes on the shit that I got to see. I mean, it was just like oh, amazing stuff. Amazing. <laughs> I've been watching this guy on YouTube, Jesse Lee Peterson. If you if you don't know who he is, look him up. You know, you don't, you don't gotta. I guess he, you could say he's a political guy or something like that, but it's just the weirdest. It it kind of feels like that between two ferns um, thing that Zach Galifianakis used to do, where he'd have a guest on and it would just be like the most awkward interaction ever. It's it's that kind of thing. Uh, let's see. I know I missed quite a few guys. I apologize. Now we're burning it up here tonight. We're already almost an hour into this thing, and I haven't we haven't gotten into one fucking release yet. So. Uh, Let's see if I miss anything else. Let's see. Uh, Alan Erie, I've come to appreciate Dawn of the Dead more on its own terms over the years, but it doesn't surpass, uh, or Day of the Dead, okay, Dawn at all for me. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah, Day is, uh, I love Day quite a bit, but uh, it, it's it's no Dawn. Uh, let's see, Day has superior effects, of course, yeah, yeah. A lot more money in that, and Tom had a lot more experience, too, so. Uh, I would like Dave much better, except for the score. Okay, that's interesting. John did a fine job, but uh, I find the Caribbean feels so boring. That's interesting. I I, I love the day score. Um, I, I I love I love John's scores. Period. Day creep show. Even his uh, even his score for effects. I, I fucking love that. The ding, 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 ding. you can hear the the seeds of the creep show theme, and then I, I absolutely love it. Uh, John, uh, I've talked to Mike Gornick about the version George sent. I'm pretty sure it would be identical or maybe a tad longer than the 156. Yeah, that's what I would think. And like I said, there may be a little extra in there, like the like some of that extra footage, like maybe, you know, when 
you know, the Flyboys falling out of the ceiling and falling on Roger when they're in the hallway. Maybe that would have been on there. I don't know, but that seems like something George may have just cut. Uh, but if he would have just cut it, I don't know why they would have used it. That specifically that footage in, you know, that, that interview or whatever, but yeah, who knows? And uh, he did say that the Italians respected George's work. So they, yeah. that is true. I mean, Dario absolutely respected George, respected George enough to say, make your movie. We're going to help finance it. And I'm, George, Dario really didn't have much say at all in it. You know, the, the whole thing was like, he's going to get uh, an opportunity to make his own version, to cut it how he wanted it. Um so uh, that would make a lot of sense. I, I I don't. Yeah, that doesn't seem like something Dario would do. I don't feel like Dario would just be like, hey, fuck it is, you know, and just tossed it or whatever. <laughs> I'm sure that it's got to be there somewhere. I don't know if anybody will. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever be uncovered or, or what will happen to it or we'll ever see the line today. But I never thought we'd see the, the Martin black and white either. I don't, I, but, you know, apparently that's a possibility here very, very soon. Uh, Jesse Lee Peters and Super Troll. Yeah, I mean, he absolutely is. But it's 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 funny as hell. Just the, the, his speech and the way he talks. I don't, it's just something that's it's hilarious to me. And uh, let's see. Uh, Synthetic says George wanted that music feel for day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I wonder. I can't remember if, if John's talked about that before, whether or not he based that on the, the original screenplay that George wrote, because the original day screenplay was very much, you know, jungle you know it, more outdoors and stuff like that it was took place on an island so maybe i don't know if he I, I have a feeling i remember john talking about that before where he based that score off of the screenplay um i can't remember i, I don't know i'll be talking on my ass here but uh <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and get into the history of dawn of the dead on home video now it's like i said just focusing on the u.s releases here because if we got into the overseas stuff i would never leave I, I would be here till tomorrow but there's quite a bit um in terms of the of physical media in the united states dawn of the dead over the years from 1983 till now not even till now but fuck till 2007 like i said we haven't had anything and you know damn near 17 years now um so yeah we'll go ahead Get into them and get settled here. Um, I had something else to bring up too. Just Fright Rags is putting out a new t shirt um, <clears throat> for Dawn of the Dead. I don't know if you guys are huge Fright Rags fans. I am not personally. They're, the designs are a little too loud, a little too, uh, um, I don't know, boisterous for me. I'm a little, I'm a simpler, you know, I kind of like just, you know, BP trucking or something like that. Just something a little more toned down. Um, but uh, they do great. Are if you're into those type of shirts, I mean that's that's the way to go. I think it's coming out January 12th, so next week uh, they'll be dropping on the Fright Rags website. So check them out. And Fright Rags has done a shitload of Dawn of the Dead stuff. I wonder if that's a. Uh, I wonder what the rights are to that. I wonder how much Rubenstein's making off of uh, off of those rights. That'd be interesting. What the what the deal is on that? Because apparently he has no issues with slapping the Dawn likeness on things. It's just a matter of putting the movie out. He doesn't want to fuck with apparently. So let's, uh, let's knock that out of here and we'll go ahead and get started. So the history of Dawn of the dead on home video, <clears throat> it all started 1983, five, well, I guess four years in the United States after Dawn of the dead was originally released. Uh, it got its very first release here. On Betamax, 1983, the same year as the VHS. Like I said, I do not own the Betamax version of this. It's pretty much the exact same, um, exact same release as the VHS, the Thorny MI release. Um, the, uh, so yes, this is the Betamax version, but the version that I first saw Dawn of the Dead on. After my uncle told me about this movie, after we, you know, I was 10 years old at the time, Resident Evil was huge at the time. We, me and my cousins, that's, we were obsessed with Resident Evil. And during a conversation with me and my little cousin in the backseat of a car, you know, just throwing out, oh, what would be, you know, a great place for a zombie apocalypse or a zombie movie or a zombie game to take place? 
And I threw out, man, I'd love to see, I'd love to play Resident Evil in a mall or something like that. I think that would be so cool. And my uncle was like, well, actually, there's this little movie from back in the day called Dawn of the Dead where there's zombies in a mall. And I was like, what? I never even, what is that? So then I saw this at my local movie gallery in Olive Branch, Mississippi. Now, when I saw the cover, and I love this cover, by the way. I mean, this is the Bob Michelucci artwork. Uh, you know, I mean, this is iconic. I have the poster now. I mean, it, it's, I, I, I love this artwork now. You know, it's the cover of the poster book. Um, but at the time, like I said, I was 10 years old and I was renting horror movies at the time. You know, I'd seen quite a bit and I loved horror. My, my parents were never like, oh, this is too, too much. Sometimes, like if something was a little too hardcore, like they weren't like, hey, Mike, here's a cannibal holocaust. Check this out. You'll love it. No, I mean, they were, you know, Freddy, Jason, Hellraiser, shit like that. <clears throat> my parents were pretty open and cool with. Now, I had seen at this point, I had seen Tom Savini's Night of the Living Dead remake. And I loved it. Um, so when I heard about Dawn of the Dead and I saw this at the movie store, I picked it up and I looked at it. And I was just like, man, this kind of looks not great. Because if you think about this cover and you look at the back, you know, there's it's not a lot there. I mean, you read the description. I mean, the description sounds great. And that's what kind of sold it on me. I was like, OK, I guess this is it because it does mention, you know, the corpses of the recently dead are returning to life and attacking the living, devouring their victims in the big cities. Uh, there is no place to hide. When two members of a Philadelphia SWAT unit decide to escape the city with two friends, the four take flight in a traffic helicopter. However, when the gas starts to run low, they must land on the roof of a mall now occupied by the living dead. Armed with weapons, the four humans manage to secure them all through a series of brutal battles with the living dead creatures. Will the besieged four escape the bandits and the grisly flesh-eating zombies? Dawn of the Dead, a horror classic. So I read that. I was like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. They land on a mall. I, I don't know if it's going to be any good. Because I didn't really know George Romero at the time. I really didn't hadn't heard of Dawn of the Dead at the time. So I did rent it. And I mean, this, I mean, like I said, 83. So I mean, it's at the time, especially when you think about the different uh, video covers that were out at the time. I and mean, when you if sitting, you know, sitting next to Maniac, the cover of Maniac or the cover of like a lot of the slashers and a lot of stuff that were coming out at the time, it does look a little tame. Like there's no blood, there's no guts. I mean, you look on the back, everything back then, every, every horror VHS, you know, it had to look as gruesome and bloody as possible. Um, but the Dawn VHS just kind of, just kind of looks like almost calming or something like, I guess just the sunrise in the background and stuff like that. So this was the version that I saw first, took it home, popped it in fell in love with it it wouldn't instantly become my favorite film until a couple of years later when i saw it on ifc and recorded it on you know uh, a blank vhs and then watched it over and over and over and over and over again but at the time i loved it I, that weekend i watched it like three times i watched it that friday night um watched it again the next day with my mom during the day then i think i watched it again that night i mean i watched it four times actually i think i watched it that sunday too um, cause God, this is before internet or anything like that. So when you're a 10 year old kid and you're stuck in, in the house and you got this kick-ass movie to watch, you're just going to watch it over and over again. Just, just what we did. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Kids now it's like, you can't even get them to sit down and watch a fucking movie. Um, so yeah, this is, like I said, this is an old rental copy. You got the, uh, please rewind sticker on there. The horror section sticker on there i love that um i don't even remember what i paid for this it was you know probably more than you know a 40 year old vhs would probably be worth in the eyes of a normie but uh for a for a nut bar like me had to have it original version from 1983 this came out and this is really the main version that you'd always see at video stores um a lot of the later releases you'd never really see too much of um, in terms of like for rent and stuff like that, they always just had this old beat up fucking shell case um, sitting on a shelf. Um, <laughs> and I mean, this this thing is pretty beat up, pretty worn. I mean, this is uh, this is one that a lot of people, a lot of people rented and, and watched back in the day. 
um, an ultimately or an ultimate uh, horror film, a savagely satanic vision of America. Roger Ebert. That's always the thing about Dawn of the Dead too, is that Ebert and Siskel and Ebert both praised it when it came out, which is very rare, especially for somebody like Gene Siskel who fucking hated horror. Anything, anything to do with horror, he wanted no part of. But yeah, 1983, Thor. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, the original, the OG VHS release of Dawn of the Dead and Betamax. Like I said, and I, I've, I've seen a couple of Betamax for sale online on eBay. Thought about picking it up, but at the same time, I don't have a beta player. I, have, I don't really have, uh, I don't know, a sentimental connection to it like I do the VHS. But I, if I ever found it for a good price, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to pass it up, obviously, but... Uh, let's see. Let's see. Cleveland resale of the old VHS copies. Took one to Living Dead Weekend last year. in Roville Mall. Spent a lot of money on signatures. Yes, you will. <laughs> I've spent so much money on signatures. It just, it, it, I don't even want to think about it. It would just piss me off. Uh, let's see. Synthetic. I even have the old Dawn of the Dead licensed board game. Yeah, I, I bought that too. Like when I first started, so like collecting, collecting, I really didn't start doing that until a few years ago to be honest with you there was a period there in my 20s where i just was I, I collected a lot of different shit but something clicked a few years back and i was just like i'm just i, I have to just settle on one thing and my my thing is romero and i'm just going to start collecting romero stuff and that was one of the first things i bought because that was one of the first things i remember wanting and seeing on ebay and just dying for and uh, i ended up buying that that board game i haven't played it it's still like you know not it's still in it's not sealed but it hasn't been played like all the pieces aren't you know popped out or whatever yet so haven't fucked with it yet but uh john said this is probably the version i rented a blockbuster now that i think about it yeah i mean that that was the version that i saw everywhere like every mom and pop shop every you know like it wasn't at my blockbuster but it was that we had a we had a place called movie gallery which is kind of like you know hollywood i think it was owned by the same people that own like hollywood video and stuff like that that was the version they had uh, I love the story. Nostalgia is magical. Thanks, Grande. Uh, it's going to be a lot of nostalgia tonight because a lot of these I have such fond memories of either like the first time I saw it, uh, like the actual thing in a store. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to get this. Or, or the first time, you know, the, the seeing Dawn of the Dead on DVD was just like because DVD, like when I first saw anything on DVD, I was just like, oh, my God, this looks like this is the best this thing's ever going to look. It was the best Dawn of the Dead it ever looked for sure. Um, King Gore, nice. Let's see. Uh, Synthetic Dawn of the Dead was smart to fly under the radar a bit with the box office it had. Uh, an X rating when the films <clears throat> when the film was about to come out. I have the French X poster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't have French poster. I don't have the French poster actually. I don't think I do. It's the one with the the machete zombie Lenny Lee's on it, ain't it? I don't have that one. That's what I need to have though. And uh, John says after I rented it, I fell in love with it. Then I got lucky because shortly afterwards, Anchor Bay released the theatrical cut that you're about to show in '96, and I bought that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. All right, let me uh, let's get back into it. So we have got Thorny Am I. Then after Thorny Am I, uh, there were two other releases um, that came out a few years after um after that one let me uh throw this back up here i don't have either one of these because they're very similar to the thorny my release um in terms of you know the presentation and whatnot but uh about four years later on vhs 1987 they released this version from hbo video um which the different, the main difference in this one, uh, in, in comparison to uh, the Thorny MI, you can see on the back here. There's no picture. Like on the picture here, you got uh, you know Frank Sorreo and uh, you know Clayton Hill and, and and Sharon Hill and Jay Stover and all those all those fellers. Uh, there's nothing on this one. It's a, it's completely blank on the back. Um, and the lettering on this one uh, for the Dawn of the Dead is is green as opposed to the blue on this one. Uh, on the thorny am i so this is one i, I really i don't own uh it's they're this one and the one that that came after this one uh very similar releases i think there's just kind of like a little bit of a re-release i don't know what the i don't know a whole lot about the licensing um 
and how what all went into that back in the day like how it went from thorny mi to hbo video which if i remember i may be wrong on this if anybody in the chat knows better than me let me know but i think it wasn't didn't thorny mi become hbo video maybe that's why they did the re-release of it uh, i'm not sure i'm not too hip on the uh, the history of thorny mi and, and hbo video but i feel like i remember hearing that from somebody somewhere at one point but but yeah this is the uh HBO Video 1987 version, and then a year later, they released, or two years later, I'm sorry. No, wait, this is 90, sorry, I got notes here. <laughs> so we're looking at the VHS version. So this came out in 93. This is the Republic, Republic Pictures and Lumiere. I don't have this one either. Um, this is the theatrical cut as well. And again, it's very similar to the first two releases that came out on VHS, except this one has... Um, the the zombies there at the bottom and and all that. So it's you know a slightly different version. Um, let's see. John's got a question. Uh, does that say does that running time say 136 minutes? That's the cans cut length. Yeah, that's one thing I looked into too because I noticed that as well. And it's actually just a typo. Um, from from all the information I can find, I, I don't know about. I don't know if I've seen this version before. Um. But from what I read, it's, it was a typo. Um, it says 136 minutes, but I think it was supposed to say 126 minutes. Uh, just from what I read. I could be wrong. Like I said, if anybody has this version out there, check it out. Let us know. Um, but from what from what I understand, it's just a typo. It says 136 instead of 126, I believe. Let me zoom in on that I can, uh, if I can. Let me go. E yeah, yeah, 136 on that one. So, yeah, I think that one was just a typo. Um, but, yeah, so this is 87 to 93. We had the Republic release here of Dawn of the Dead. Um, let me see anything down there. I don't know what that other company is, Lumiere. I've heard of Republic before. Um, I do. The one thing I do like about this one, though, is up here in the little corner here, you got that... Uh, the, the basement corpse down <laughs> at the tenement um, up here in the little corner. I do like that little aspect to it. Yeah. I mean, think about, I mean, the first 10 years of releases of Dawn of the Dead, I mean, it's very plain artwork. I mean, you, you just, and down here, the thing about this one as well that I read, cause I noticed this, if you look down here in the bottom left-hand corner, it says director's cut. And that is a misprint as well. It's not the director's cut. Um, this was uh, the theatrical cut as well. I think, if I remember correctly, they put it as the director's cut, but then there was some kind of legal issue where they had to recall, or not recall, but reissue a lot of this shit without that little director's cut thing. So I always thought that was a little interesting. That, that If you have a version of this, if you can find a version of this out there, um, and it has that little stripe down there at the bottom that says director's cut. It might be worth some money because I do know that this was like the first run that it was kind of became an issue. Um, at least from what I read, I, I don't know. This was before my time. 93, I was five. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, if you own this version, if you have the Republic Pictures version, check that, check and see if it says uh, director's cut on it. Because it shouldn't. A lot of the ones, a lot, most of the ones you'll find out in the wild do not have that on it because it's not. It's actually just the theatrical version. Um, we should have some laser discs coming up here next. All right. So this is the HBO video image release of, of the laser disc. This is the first release uh, on laser disc of Dawn of the Dead in the United States. This is 1988 when this came out. Um, again, I, I'm not, not big laser disc guy. Uh, I did see earlier on eBay, there's a Martin laser disc up for sale for pretty good price. I mean, if I can find it for a good price, like if I can find it for cheap, like better believe if I'm at a fucking antique shop or something like that, or a peddler's mall or something like that. And I come across or laser disc of Dawn of the dead or Martin or fucking anything Romero, I'm, I'm going to buy it. But man, for what laser discs are going for now, it's it's insane. I think this one, if you want to pick this up, you can find it on eBay, but it's going to cost you 50, 60 bucks. Uh, you may be able to find it for a little cheaper every now and then, but that's pretty much the going rate for laser discs now. It's it's gotten kind of crazy. Um, 
but yeah, it, pretty much a, just a very basic release uh, of Dawn of the Dead at the time on Laserdisc. This is before we started getting all the the extra features like the the commentary with George, Christine, and, and Tom on the uh, I think it's the director's cut that's coming up here in a little bit from Elite. Um, then there's like some behind not behind the scenes, but um, some convention footage that I think you can see uh, Michael Felcher in it and shit. Um, so this is kind of you know a pretty basic release of Dawn of the Dead. But it's the first Laserdisc release of Dawn of the Dead in the United States, 1988. Uh, then after that, uh, we had the uh, Laserdisc re-release in uh, 1989, I believe. Uh, no, this is the Republic version that came out in 93, my bad. Um, this one has... Let me see if it has any features on it. No, this is a pretty bare-bones release as well at the time, 93. Like I said, I'm not super, super familiar with Laserdisc. So I'm kind of just playing it by ear here until we actually get to to my era of shit. <clears throat> but yeah, this one came out in 93. Um, like I said, it doesn't look like it has very many features on it, uh, if, if any whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I do like the cover. I mean, as you can tell, everything from 83 to 93 at this point has had pretty much this exact same cover, the style cover that Bob Michelucci art. Um, what does that say down there? What's the quote? An an ultimate horror film, a savagely satanic vision of America. Is that the same thing somewhere? Yeah. So, uh, who is it? I can't fucking see that. It's too. I think. I guess it says Roger. You're rich Chicago sometimes. Okay. It's a little blurry. It's not the best quality of a photo, but uh, it is what it is. All right, so that was a 93 Republic release, and I believe, yep, yeah, this is the Elite Laserdisc release from 96, the very first release um, of the Director's Cut, um, in a letterbox version, and this is when we started getting the, uh, the special features, I believe. Uh, fuck, can't hardly see, can't hardly read it, but, uh, but yeah. Elite and Anchor Bay put this out together, which is interesting. I was kind of confused about because, like I said, this is a little bit before my time. If anybody in the chat has more information on these, let me know. But Anchor Bay, I know originally was Video Treasures. Um, I do believe. So would they be working with Elite at the time? I don't know. Uh, Elite, of course, was like kind of the first ones to put out. You know, the Night of the Living Dead on Laserdisc 2. I mean, that was kind of the big one where you got all that commentary with all the cast and crew and stuff. Um, so, yeah, this was 96. And then that same year, they had a, um, a special edition, a widescreen director's cut uh, of this as well. And this is actually a, a Laserdisc that I've looked at uh, picking up in, in here recently. Just a simple fact that it has that uh, does have all the special features on here. It does have the commentary track with with George and Christine and and Tom. That uh, it's available on my channel if you guys want to listen to it because I had never heard it. I didn't even know it fucking existed until uh, you know a little over a year ago when I saw it. I was just like, holy shit! I got to put this up. Um, but this has got all those the bonus features and stuff. And this is like like for what I was saying earlier about getting a region free player for that Italian box set of uh, zombie. Uh, for that full frame version, this is what kind of <laughs> make me want to track down a laser disc player just to, uh, to kind of dig into this release. Cause like I said, it's got the commentary and I think there's, there's quite a few special features here on this one. Um, so, yeah. And I don't know. I do like that cover. This is kind of the first, so this is kind of the first time that we've gotten a home video release with the actual, um, like poster artwork, um, they use kind of the, <clears throat> the Paul Buster zombie, the airport zombie uh, as the, as the cover boy on it. So this is the very first, like the, right now we're getting, like I said, mid nineties. This is kind of where we're starting to see, like, this is kind of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The marketing, uh, aspect of dawn of the dead it, it, where everything now you see is the you know the the airport zombie head and coming up over the horizon and, and all that that's kind of it's kind of where it started right around here <clears throat> and uh so yeah that's that's it for that let me uh take that off and we'll get back on here because i think everything else on this list i own 
there's a few like variants here and there that I don't, but I mean, it's pretty much going to be the exact same thing, just on a different, uh, different medium. Uh, let me see. Let me, see. Uh, let me back up through these comments here. Yep, here we go. That makes sense because the Cans version, I think, was first released in '96, right after the Anchor Bay Theatrical. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where the uh, the, the laser di- on laser disc because the, the VHS video treasures and and Anchor Bay was '96 on that VHS too, which is this bad boy right here, which is an old r- rental version as well. Um, and they came out with that uh, laser disc that same year. Um, let's see, but yeah, this is the theatrical version came out 96, I believe. Yep. 96. Um, this is one I don't really have too much of. I, this is one I just bought just cause it was cheap and I didn't own it. Um, uh, let me see. Let me check his comments here real quick before we move on. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, that's Savini's real human skeleton using the movie. Yeah, that is, a, and if you there's a, I forget what season it is, but in the new Creep Show series, that uh, that same skeleton can be seen. I forget what episode. I believe it may be the first season of Creep Show, um, the Creep, the newest Creep Show series. That you that actual they're in a, um, I guess it's in Vegas, and they're in a uh, a horror movie museum type place, and that skeleton that is the actual skeleton used in Dawn of the Dead is the one that they that you see in that episode. So that's something worth checking out. I don't remember much about the actual episode of the story, but I do remember that was the whole selling point on me kind of going out of my way to to, to watch that episode. Laserdisc, not worth it uh, with all the good digital quality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, yeah. But I mean, like I said, that one release of Dawn, and just to be able to have, I don't know, <laughs> just me starting to try to talk myself into fucking... Uh, collecting laser disc now uh 19 lemon guitar dude this one was like the gold back then was like gold back then to hear george's commentary for the first time i imagine it was i remember the first what was the first commentary that i listened to it may have been that night of living dead elite commentary on that dvd with all the cast and crew um i think that probably was the first commentary i ever listened to was that one um Synthetic, the commentary was funny with the dog barking, the phone ringing. Yeah, yeah, it's a great. Com- I love commentaries like that where it's literally. And I've I've heard criticism on that commentary because they they kind of did the same commentary for the Anchor Bay releases um, a few years later, but they had Perry Martin kind of narrating it, kind of keep it all together. But I I like when it just feels like you're just hanging out with these guys. Well, I like the like the the Savini and and Chris Devrakis commentary on that UK release that DVD from like '99. I love that one. And it's just the, the, a lot of it is just those, those guys just like fucking joking around and just talking about like, ah, I need a cigarette or something like that. I love listening to commentaries like that because it just feels like you're just hanging out with the guys fucking, you know, just bullshit and watching the movie. But yeah, so uh, Video Treasures, Anchor Bay did the first VHS release of this one, 1996. And then 97, what is it going? 99. This is when we this one came out and this one was really interesting because this is the director's cut. Um, Oh, something almost fell out of this. Oh, Oh, so this is kind of cool. I didn't even notice this. So in 99, we get a two tape Titanic style edition of Dawn of the dead director's cut, uh, come out from anchor Bay video treasures and, you know, elite is, um, is credited on this as well. So I wonder like, I wonder like rights wise, you know, I guess elite may still have the rights to this. I don't know. So maybe they would, you know, had to be credited on it. I don't know how that works. Just talking on my ass, but this has kind of like a little gatefold on it where you open it up and it's got some pretty badass photos of George uh, up here at the top uh, right here. You can see that classic photo of George Dario, Mike Gornick and uh, Richard Rubenstein. Um, and then you're on this side, you get a little artwork there in the middle. You got your exploding head, your genie Jeffries, a Palma. I love that when you can open it up, but also included on this, not only is it like I said, two tape edition, get your part one special edition, 
which is the director's cut. But this one also had some bonus features on it. And that's what the second tape is. Um, bonus features, tape two, domestic and international theatrical trailers. Mm, maybe it's a different version. I know there's a version on here that has a Monrovo Mall um, commercial on it. I think it's, yeah, it's coming up. But also included in this, I still have the official movie merchandise catalog that used to come with the son bitch. Um, I bet all these shirts. Now, how fucking cool! Holy shit! I just noticed that merchandise from 1999, folks. You got your Halloween stuff, and then down here, two badass movies. Of course, Dawn of the Dead. You got two T-shirts and a hat, and then a T-shirt for Werner Her <laughs> Werner Herzog's Nosferatu. That's a, was that a huge thing back in the late 90s? Because that, that came out the same year as Dawn, I think, 78, 79, somewhere around there. That's just a completely rare. Like Halloween, I guess, maybe it's a officially licensed for the Halloween collection. I guess this is probably, so 99 we're talking, so we're there, this is probably for the 20th anniversary, I would guess, of all these movies coming out, because Halloween... Dawn of the Dead, Nosferatu all came out the same year, I believe. So yeah, that would make sense that they were all kind of selling the same shit around the same time. <laughs> what company? I guess this is uh, Anchor Bay, right? Yeah, this is all Anchor Bay merch. Some Hammer Horror stuff here on the back. So that's just super cool. That's, that's always a fun bonus when you... Because I bought this years after the fact. This is not... Um, this is just one that I picked up because it was a good price on eBay. But it's awesome when, when it still has shit like that in it, you know? Yeah, it kind of takes you back. <clears throat> so then Anchor Bay, we were moving on. We've gone through Beta. We've gone through VHS. We've gone through LaserDisc. And then the very first release of Dawn of the Dead on DVD. And this is a, still a sealed copy. Uh, I did have another version of this that I watched. It's, I will say the... The, for some reason, I don't know why, maybe it's just because like we, we've become so used to high def and Blu-ray and 4K and shit now. But when you go back and watch some of these older, like original like DVDs, they, they look terrible. Um, this is kind of one of them. But you got the very first collector's edition of Dawn of the Dead, original director's cut on DVD. This is that flipper disc. This, it's funny, this this version, you would have to like... You'd, you'd get through like half of the movie and then you'd have to stop, take it out, flip it over and continue. It was, it's kind of weird. It's kind of, it was kind of like a tape or something. I don't know why the it, shit was like that at the time. Um, but a lot of things were, um, that season of the witch anchor Bay release was like that, but it was two different movies. So it made sense. You had season of the witch on one end and there's always vanilla on another, but, uh, but yeah, this is the first edition of Dawn of the Dead on DVD in the United States. Director's cut. And it was weird. This is the period of time where, you know, Richard Rubenstein kind of discovered that he had this director's cut. So he was just kind of, this was getting released all over the place in the late nineties because it was kind of like, holy shit, there's a different cut of Dawn of the Dead. And, uh, so we've got you know, VHS, DVD, um, let's see. So yeah, the very first uh, this good good trivia, very first release of Dawn of the Dead in the United States was the director's cut. So that's interesting to know. I don't think this is the original price tag on it. That looks about right, 1999. That's about what these were going for at the time. Well, I don't know, man. This would have been what 90 97, so this would have been like one of the very first DVDs out there. So I think back in the day DVDs were outrageously expensive kind of like anything is when it first comes out but they were like 4k prices i mean we're talking 30 40 bucks from what i remember so this may just be like an aftermarket price but pretty cool first edition of dawn of the dead on dvd uh let me see we check the comments here before we move on <clears throat> synthetic said that set was my first purchase copy the uh the two tape uh, John Bullo says that uh, two tape cans cut should be 96. I wore the hell out of that tape. Yeah, it was, it was uh, let me see. right. 96. Yeah. 96 is the uh, copyright on it. 
-hmm. Yeah, I, like I said, I bought that after the fact. Not the first edition of Dawn of the Dead that I bought. The very first edition of Dawn of the Dead that I bought came out in 99. It's kind of the similar thing. It's the director's cut anniversary edition on VHS. And I don't know why. I guess it's because the anniversary edition, but it's so goddamn colorful. And I remember seeing this. It was at an, an FYE or an on cue or whatever it was called back in the day. It was in the, in the mall here in Owensboro, uh, Kentucky. And I remember, oh, how old? Uh, I guess I would have been 14, 15. Uh, maybe a little younger, 13 or 14 at the time. So let's see. I saw Dawn for the first time. I was 10. That would have been in 98. So 2000. So yeah, I would have probably been 13, 13, 14 years old. Saw this for sale. And I remember the price. It was 20 bucks. And I saw this. I was there with my parents. They don't always let us go to these stores. So we you know, want to buy you know music or movies or something. I saw this. I said, I have to have this. And 20 bucks back then for us was a lot. Like typically my parents would be cool if you if you were bought but if you bought something on clearance or you looked in the used section or something, like they were not cool with spending 20 bucks on a brand new, you know, videotape. They're like, oh, you're just a videotape kid. Just you already have it. I remember that argument too, because like I said, I already had it on fucking uh, uh on VHS from what I recorded off IFC. So I always get I would always get that argument too. It's like, well, why do you need that? You already have it, you know. Um, but I had to have the actual copy of it. And this is the version that actually has the Monroeville mall commercial on it. Um, I remember at the end of this tape, if you watch through the credits at the end, you get, doo -doo 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 -doo. if you're fashion minded, watch out Monroeville mall. So it's, it's such a fucking trippy, weird commercial too, but I absolutely fucking love it. Um, and yeah, so like it has liner notes and stuff on the back. So there's the actual VHS. And this is this is the one that I wore the fuck out, John. This is the one that I watched over and over and over. Like I have vivid memories of being at home during the summer, home from school, eating ramen noodles and watching this on fucking repeat uh, at that time. So, yeah, you got this is like your main cover. And on the back, it's got extras, liner notes got the little poster here um which is uh it's from the poster book on the inside of that which i have some signatures on and then uh some liner notes here from george which i i, I read when i got it years ago i couldn't tell you what it says now but uh but yeah i uh, this is amazing a version that that i have very fond very fond memories of like I said, watching over and over and over again. I'm surprised it's in as good shape, good a shape as it is. But uh, this is one of my pride and joys back in the day, so I'm not surprised. It's rewound. Look at that. See, I'm I, I'm a good I'm, I'm I'm a good VHS watcher. I would never return a video back to the store and not rewound. That's just rude. Who would do that? Why would anybody do that? <clears throat> Uh, let's see. John says that uh, tape also has an audio error. Are you talking about the uh, two tape? What's the audio error on it? I'll have to go uh, find it. Oh, uh, I bet I know. I bet I know. Because I think it may have been the same audio error that was on the V8, the, the recorded VHS version that I took off of IFC. Is it the, and let me know if I'm wrong, but is, I think, what is it? So when Flyboy is going down the stairwell, he takes the rifle from Fran and he heads down the stairwell and then it cuts when, 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 okay. So the cut from when Roger shoots the zombie that he pulls into JC Penny so they can shut the door, he kicks in the head and he shoots. And then it cuts to a shot of Fran talking, but the uh, dialogue isn't synced up with the mouth. And it's just, it, it's like Steven for God's sakes. And it's like her mouth's moving and then <laughs> let's get up to the roof. Is that what you're talking about? Because if that's the case, I got excited because that's awesome. Because that's kind of the first version I remember watching all the time. Because like I said, it was on that IFC. Um, but yeah, that that would that would be absolutely hilarious. Because I, I don't know, I couldn't, I, I never knew if that was an actual thing that was on that or an actual release, or if that was an IFC issue. I had no idea. Uh, said so that I still need to get my ass in Mall. Yes, you do. 
I went for the first time. I, I put it off for so, so long because, and that's the thing, guys. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been to Pittsburgh four times now. And the first time I went was in 2021. So I've been to Pittsburgh now four times in you know two years or whatever it's been. Almost three years, I guess. Do it. It's I'll never forget the first time that I, that you walk in. You got to go in through the the where the bay doors are because all that looks almost identical. But the first time you walk in there and, and there's a smell there. There's a certain smell that Monroeville Mall has, and it just you know. Hang on a second. Okay, just gonna check. I thought I I'm on I'm on call this weekend, so I'm <laughs> trying to keep an eye out, see if I'm make sure I don't get any calls. Uh, no, I'm not a doctor, but you know. Something like that. Um, but yeah, you I mean, just you you gotta go, man. Uh, I don't know where are you located at? How far are you away from Monroe Mall? Because I'm in southern Indiana, so I mean it's like an eight hour drive. Um, but man, it's worth it's worth every minute of it. Um and I mean, you no, know, you the mall, I mean, unfortunately the airport's no longer there, sadly. No, I was so super, super glad that I was able to visit the airport before they tore it down. Um, but there's so much. I mean, it's just Something about Pittsburgh, man. You, you can feel Georgia in the air. And like as soon as you go through that tunnel and you come out the other end, and then all of a sudden, ah, oh, there's, you know, there's Pittsburgh. You're like, holy shit, I'm here. And it just feels familiar. Like I'd never been to Pittsburgh in my life, but the first time I went to Pittsburgh, it just felt like I know this place. Like if you know Georgia's films, you'll know Pittsburgh. Like it, you're just like, oh my God. Cause you'll just run into shit. Like you'll just notice, like, Hey, that looks familiar. Is that where? And you look at it and it's like, oh yeah, that's where they filmed, you know, such and such, you know. I'll never forget the moment that it hit me so hard. We were on that uh there's like a lift that goes up. I can't remember what it's called, but it's in there's always vanilla. And the the sound effect of it is in always vanilla. It's very pronounced and there's always vanilla. And I remember we went up there and I had we had our daughter at the time. She was less than a year old, and we we rode that to the top and and I I heard that sound and it just hit me. I was like, holy shit, this is this is the the lift from there's always vanilla. And it was. I looked at it, I was like, yep, that's where they filmed. It. And I just, you just, you just automatically just know. Like if you know George's work, you just know. Uh, but yeah, you definitely, I can't stress that to you enough, man. And hey, if you go to Living Dead Weekend, that's the perfect time to go. Um it, it's you know, you're it's it's like the best way I can describe it is if you like, let's say you're a foreigner or something and you speak a completely different language than everyone else, but you spend every day of your life, like trying to speak English or something, even though you're fluid and you know, you're from, you know, Mexico and you speak Spanish, or whatever. Um, it's like the one time, uh, or two times per year recently, uh, where you can go and be around a bunch of people who speak your language and you can just, it's like, Holy shit. Like I can, it's like, it's like being on here with you guys, but in person, you know, <laughs> just hanging out outside fucking double tree. Just everybody speaks the same language there. It's amazing. Uh, anyway, 1911 guitar, dude. I watched that two tape version a few hundred times back in the day. I didn't even know about the other versions of Don yet at the time. Yeah. I mean, it's weird at the time. Cause this was, you know, pre-internet. I mean, shit, we didn't know all the endless versions of Dawn of the dead. It was just kind of like whatever we saw at the movie store was just kind of what it was. And every now and then you'd come across something new and it would be like, holy shit. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many different ones out there. Um, let's see. John said, I looked at that copy. It's 96 came out a couple months after the theatrical. Okay. Let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, John says, I love that Warhol VHS cover. I got the cans VHS instead of the theatrical one because the cans was longer. Had no idea the theatrical DVD had the Argento scenes on it. Um, yeah, that, that's, I do. And, and, and the one, the, the follow up to this actually, to this one. Uh, let's see. Same year, 1999 on DVD. We got the, uh, anniversary edition of the U S theatrical cut of Dawn of the dead. So this is the second release of Dawn of the dead on DVD, uh, 1999 anchor Bay release this one. They also released this on VHS as well. It's pretty much the, I don't have it, but it's pretty much the exact same cover, same artwork, everything like that. I think on the back here, so you open it up, get the disc, you got the insert card, the uh, scene selections here on the back. 
And I believe, no, I think it may just be the VHS version, but there, you should, I think you can flip it over. There's stuff on the other side. But yeah, this was out on DVD back in, uh, like I said, 99. The special features on this one, pretty. This one's the one that has the alternate scenes from the European cut, um, the zombie, um, which is what John's talking about. Uh, also has the Monroeville Mall commercial, the theatrical trailer, and it's in a widescreen presentation. And this is a much better transfer to um, than the the first, uh, the, the collector's edition dvd this one looks rough i mean when you watch it now it looks rough this one looks okay like it's not it's not as good as the ones that anchor bay would come out with here um a few years later which we'll talk about but uh still not a bad and i remember seeing this one uh where did i see it it was at uh one of those used dvd cd places and uh this was years ago, and it was like 20 bucks used. So I don't know what these go for now. Uh, I, don't, I don't really see a lot of these on eBay here recently, at least. So yeah, I don't know what this one goes for. But uh, but yeah, I mean, like, we were getting all kinds of Dawn stuff, late 90s. Um, <clears throat> but then there was a little a dip, a quiet period there. Um, Anchor Bay still had the rights to it. And I think, or I don't know if we backtrack. Rubenstein had the rights to it. <clears throat> I think he was comfortable working with Anchor Bay at the time for what they did recently. Or not recently, but, you know, late 90s. And uh, what are we talking? Five years later. So Anchor Bay would do Day of the Dead, that Day of the Dead release in 2003. So in 2004, we get the Divi Max special edition release of Dawn of the Dead. Now, this is the one, this is the version that I saw for the first time on DVD. This is the first high def, or not high def, or whatever you want to call it. At the time, it was fucking high def. Um, this was the first one that I saw. Um, like I said, at the time, I had this version on VHS, and this is the only version of Dawn of the Dead that I had at the time. And I was waiting for it on DVD. I had the Day of the Dead release that Anchor Bay did. I had Night of the Living Dead on one of the thousands of releases that Night of the Living Dead's gotten on DVD over the years. Show the disc. And there's a difference here in just a second. I'll show in these versions. This one, this is the first edition that came out. And I remember the first time I like I heard that it was coming out. Like there was this is probably around the time this is 2004 when this came out. In the spring of 2004, I remember very vividly because I was on spring break uh with a church group, funny enough. In 2004 in Florida, Destin, Florida. No, Panama City Beach. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's 20 years ago now, guys. Panama City Beach, Florida. Uh, with a church group on a church spring break trip for a week. And um, I was there with my girlfriend. She was a big church goer, and I was just kind of there. I was just like, hey, chance to go to Florida. And they took us to a Walmart one night, to, you know, if we needed, like, snacks or toiletries or whatever. And I remember I went to the DVD section. I was just looking around, you know. And, and, and Dawn of the Dead is one of those things. Like, now, I, I, I'll admit I kind of take it for granted. I mean, you no, know, you don't see a lot of Dawn of the Dead out in the wild, but now that we have internet and uh, capabilities of, you know, eBay and buying shit overseas and all the stuff that, that I really didn't have back in the day, um, seeing anything Dawn of the Dead out in the wild was a rare, mind-blowing experience for me. Like, that's why when they, I found that VHS, I had to have it. Like, I was just like, I have to have this. Because you just didn't see a lot around here, especially. Um so we're in this Walmart in Florida. I'm looking at the DVDs and I see this motherfucker. And I about fucking just shit. I was like, oh my God, there it is. And I was kind of like, if you look on the back here, this image of, um, of uh, Roger, you know, like with the Dawn behind him. Like I knew Dawn of the Dead very well at this point. Like I, like I said, I watched that VHS over and over and over again. And I'd never seen this shot before. So I bought this and, with whatever money I had for the trip or whatever, I think it was, you know, probably 20 bucks or whatever at Walmart at the time. I was like, I have to have this. And as soon as I bought it, I was just like, fuck Florida, fuck the ocean, fuck the beach. I'm ready to go home so I can watch this motherfucker. Like I didn't give a shit about anything else the rest of that trip. I was like, sand schmand, ocean schmotion, fuck it all. I don't care. 
I'm ready to go. Can we get this? Can we get this thing back on the road so I can go home so I can watch Dawn of the Dead on fucking DVD? But I remember seeing this image and I was like, oh my God, is there like never before seen footage in here or like extra, you know, uh, extra scenes that I've never seen before? Because, you know, when you're a Dawn of the Dead fan or a fan of any movie, if there's like, if there's an opportunity to see a piece of it or a part of it that you've never seen before, it's just like, a, oh my God, like it's, I don't know. I'm geeking out now, but. Yeah, so I remember picking this up on spring break 2004 down in Panama City Beach, Florida and uh, took it home and watched it and again, kind of retired my VHS tape and moved to this thing and just watched it over and over and over again. And the difference, so so there's two there's two releases of this style DVD. This one, if you can tell, it's more shiny, it's gold, it's got a gold look. But you'll see these out in the wild as well. And they look very similar. And this one, I've gotten a lot of autographs on it. And this is the only version of this I have. And it's all autographed. But they look very similar. So when you see them out in the wild, it can be, you know, you'll think one is the other. But this one is a different version of this. If you can tell, instead of the gold, the lettering is yellow on this. It's yellow on the back. Um, the color texture, I mean, it's it's not as shiny. I don't know really what. The big difference is in this one, except for one thing, which is a dead giveaway. And that the disc in this one is just the disc that that was included on the, the box set uh, that came out prior to this. This came out. I'm kind of skipping just to kind of make a point here. But um, uh, these came out after the box set came out. So that's the difference. These came out after the fact. These were pre-box set, post-box set. And this one I got autographed uh, when the first convention I went to, the very first and only time I got to meet George. I had George sign it, Scott Reiniger, Tom Savini, and Ken Foray. Um, they were all there. I got them all to sign it. And I was just so fucking mind blown. I had a copy of this in my bag just to watch in the hotel room. And uh, I was just getting them to sign Because this was back in the day, 2008. I mean, this is when you could go to a convention with, you know, 500 bucks and get any and every autograph you could think of. And, and, and that was back in the day when they would sign everything you had is like 20 bucks. You buy a picture off the table. I'll sign that, sign everything you got, take a picture with you and you're on your way. So I was like, I'm going to get this signed by everybody. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that's the way to tell which one you got. A lettering is yellow as compared to the gold version, which I don't, there's not really, unless I'm missing something, there's not really anything different about, about these releases. They're just, I mean, other than, you know, aesthetically, you know, I think the book's the same. Yeah, got the little insert booklet in there with some liner notes. Yeah, I, I, I wore these versions out back in the day until <clears throat> later in 2004. Later that year, I remember because it was... I got it for my birthday in October 2004, unless I'm misremembering. And this fucker is worn out. I need to buy a different version of this or, you know, a different copy of this, just a more pristine looking copy. But I wore this bastard out. The Ultimate Edition box set of Dawn of the Dead 2004. This is the old, I mean, to this day, I mean, this is, this sucker's damn near, what, move that over there, damn near what, 20 years old now, That's, and this is still the definitive release of Dawn of the Dead in the United States. Uh, I'll get to the comments here in just a section, I'm just kind of rolling through these, rolling through memory lane here, but I remember when I got this, and I remember hearing about it, because it was on like homepage of the dead and all the usual places that I would hang out at in my teen years back in the day, the forums on there and shit. So this, I knew this was coming, but I, I think my parents bought it for me for my birthday that year. I can't remember who bought it. For, I, I'm pretty sure it was my parents. Cause I mean, it was what 50, 60 bucks at the time, which is a crazy price um, for us at least. But I remember when I got this, I'm, I'm just a first and foremost, being able to see the Argento cut for the first time was a life-altering experience for me. Hey, it was just so different. God, this thing is so beat up. There's so many cracks and... Yeah, I mean... 
I need to get it. But like I said, I watched this over and over and over again to the point where at night in my room. So, so in my room, at my parents' house, my room would be like here. And then right across the hall was the bathroom. And the next to the bathroom was my parents' room. And every night, as I would go to bed, I'd lay down, I'd put on a DVD and listen to an audio commentary or a documentary or something on it. <laughs> and they still talk about this to this day. Um, so I would go to bed and like most of the time, I, I think it's the documentaries disc is the one that, that I'm referring to because the documentaries on this sucker. I mean, we had, you know, the dead walk, the very first documentary uh, on Dawn of the Dead. Uh, in terms of like a special feature that we'd gotten up to that point. Um, Document of the Dead was included on this. Um, a lot of extras. I mean, there was a mall tour with Ken Foray and David M. Gee. Savini, I think, was on that as well. You can see uh, Matt Blasey. Um, if you guys know Matt from uh, Garf Network, formerly of the WGON radio podcast. Um. Yeah, there's so much. Shit. So like when I would go to bed at night, I would lay down, I'd probably turn on the dead walk and watch that over and over again just to fucking soak up all this information because I knew I just knew that years and years down the road, I'd be sitting here talking about Dawn of the Dead when I'm in my mid thirties. But in my teen years, that's what I would watch. And I'd go to bed, I'd watch it and I'd fall asleep. And then, of course, it goes back to the main menu. And of course, the music on the main menu is that Boom, 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 boom. I fucking love it. But it would be blasting, and my parents would wake up in the middle of the fucking night and could hear it across the room and just hear all night long through the night. And to this day, they're still like, God, are you still fucking listening to that music? I'm like, well, you know, it's like, oh, we'd wake up every damn morning to go to work and we just hear that coming from your room, just on fucking repeat. Just so yeah, that, that's that's a funny story that I remember. But I, I yeah, I watched the living hell out of this. A for the documentary is the European cut. It's got the cans cut with amazing audio commentary with Richard Rubenstein on it. Uh, if you the best, one of my favorite commentaries. I, I know the European cut has the main four, which is amazing, which Felsher's talked about before on some different podcasts, different shows. Um, and that's a fun commentary to listen to. Like I like we were talking about earlier, commentaries where you feel like you're just hanging out in a room with these people watching this movie, like as a group of friends, you know, perfect for that. But for if you want to know more about the business aspect of Dawn of the Dead and and the, the Rubenstein uh, commentary is super, super interesting. I absolutely love that commentary. And then, of course, the the Perry Martin commentary with George. Chris. I mean, this, this, when this came out, I mean, I was done like there was nothing else i was going to top this at the time and like i said i've worn it out i've really worn it out over the years i mean look at this this poor box i gotta i gotta get a more pristine copy just to have and preserve because this one was what do they call it um slightly gently loved or whatever. yeah I, I've, I've made very gentle gentle love to this thing when it came out let me tell you what do they call it some stores where you know you go to a thrift store and instead of saying use they say uh fuck i can't think of it. anybody thinks of it let me know uh let's see i'm backed up here on these comments here uh john says the theatrical cut of that 20th anniversary is one is the one that has the error that it includes the doc scene from cans okay yeah 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 I, i've heard of that as well um okay that is right mm -hmm. since that guy had corduroy bell bottoms as a kid <laughs> uh I, I don't even want to talk about what i wore as a kid you, you you guys remember you guys remember hot topic you remember those uh, what we used to call the trip pants those big baggy black pants that had chains and straps and shit hanging from them I had a whole wardrobe of those and that's during this time period where I'm, you know, watching Dawn of the Dead and shit uh, as, as, as a youngster. That's, that's what I was wearing. Just, just to give you guys a visual aid to these stories. John says, yep, that's it. Uh, she doesn't say let's get up to the roof, but it says Stephen, for God's sake during the scene of her saying, let's get up to the roof. Yep. That's right. That's right. Cause I remember, I remember seeing that. I guess that's where they got that for the the when they played it on IFC because that's the version that I always watched. And it's like Stephen, for God's sakes! But it's her saying, "Yeah, that's funny." 
that's that's hey, I, that's awesome. I never knew that. I just thought that was a fuck up on IFC's part that <laughs> they couldn't sync the sync the shit up together. Uh, San Francisco, yeah, that's, that's that's a little bit out, but I do know a guy that is a huge huge Romero and Dawn of the Dead fan that just made it out to the Monroeville Mall for the first time last year. Um, and he's Sacramento based, I believe. Uh, his name's Jace. If you want to check out his YouTube channel, Music and Monsters, he does uh, Thursday of the Dead every Thursday where he goes through, you know, uh, his, I mean, you talk about a collection. I mean, I have, I got shit, but this dude has everything. This dude has shit. Like, let me tell you. So check it out. Music and Monsters is his, uh, his YouTube channel. But yeah, he came out from Sacramento last year. And I mean, he was just, you know, blown away. You won't be disappointed. Um, but yeah, I understand that. that's, that's, that's a bit of a journey, a bit of a journey, but, uh, Hey, I mean, what better time, what, you know, you're not never promised tomorrow, man. So do it. And like I said, if you come during a living dead weekend, let me know and we'll, we'll, we'll meet up and, uh, shoot the shit. Uh, John Villa says, I think that bridge thing you're talking about is also in the booby hatch bridge thing. What bridge thing am I talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, see, I'm so far back on these fucking comments. I'm, I'm way out of it. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I've have never seen the booby hatch, but I just got it on DVD that it was a part of that sale on MVD, I believe is where I got it. Um, so yeah, I got that on DVD. I still have to watch that. I got to watch that. I don't, I'm not super, super interested in the story or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's anything, you know, with the late image guys and, you know, David M. has got a role in it and there's, there's quite a few Romero people involved in that. So I've definitely, I I've definitely got to check that out. Um, let's see. John says, Oh, and before I forget, uh, I was told that the original print of the two tape cans is open mat and they quickly corrected it. Yeah. I remember hearing something about that. Uh, there's no way to tell though, by looking at it, but it does exist. Yeah, I remember hearing something about that. I don't know if I read it somewhere or somebody was talking. I can't remember. But yeah, I've heard something very similar to that. Yeah, Ultimate Edition. It really is. And I mean, I understand from from what I've heard from some people, Rubenstein is hesitant to re-release Dawn of the Dead in the United States on 4K or anything like that because he does feel like this is the Ultimate Edition of Dawn of the Dead. He doesn't feel like there's anything else you can really do with it. But I don't know. I just don't feel like he understands where physical media collectors are right now. If you released a special edition, like if you did a, a fucking Second Sight style release in the United States, I mean, I think people would fucking shit themselves over it, especially after... Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe Rubenstein's just like, I'm going to make these people wait so fucking long that they'll just... They'll go out and fight each other over it when I put it out. But uh, but yeah, I mean, apparently Rubenstein just thinks this is the ultimate version and there's no, there's, there's nothing else we can do with it. Like we've covered everything there is to cover. <laughs> but uh, as Second Sight proved, there's always more to be discovered and more to, uh, you know, more to get into with Dawn. Uh, <clears throat> See, Johnson, I remember buying that Ultimate Edition the day it was released. I haven't looked at it in a long time until I forgot all the uncommon Colbert photos in it. Yeah, there's, there's that, like, what else is in here? I know there's, like, a mall map. I know I have the, there was, like, a, a miniature version of the Dawn comic book. Like, I think the first part of it. But, yeah, it's got all, it's got the, you know, the still photography um, stuff on. What disc is that on? The theatrical, I believe. No, I don't think it'd be a, yeah. extended version. Yeah, the extended version has the uh, the photo gallery, memorabilia gallery. I kind of miss that too. I don't think a lot of places do. I don't think a lot of companies do too much of that anymore, do they? I think some do. I, I see it every now and then, but back in the day, it was a whole. It was way more like like I remember when you'd buy a DVD and it would have you could pop it into your computer and it would. You, the, the screenplay for the movie you could actually read the screenplay because it was included on the disc but yeah he's got the the booklet with the the mall map and different artwork and stuff i mean i just <clears throat> anchor bay was the 
boutique label or whatever you want to call it back in the day. They were the company back in the day with some of these releases. I mean, like this one, the Book of the Dead, Evil Dead release is amazing. I mean, they, they were just on point. Um, and maybe Rubenstein's right. Maybe that would be hard to beat. See Synthetic. I remember when I discovered the Sabini Blue stunt trampoline with my frame by frame VCR in 1983. It was pretty funny. The joys of rewatching favorite movies. Yeah, I remember seeing that. That was a thing too. That was like a period of my life actually where, and it kind of sucked because there was a period there where I started looking for shit like that. Like where I would just be like looking to see like, oh, there's the blue trampoline or I could see, oh, I see the, the, this guy's reflection in the, uh, you know, in the glass or I'm, I'm starting to see like all the imperfections. And there was like a period of a couple of years there where that's all I could see when I watched Dawn of the Dead. I hated it. I still love the movie, but I hated that. I couldn't just watch it. Uh, like I, I, that'd be like one thing I would love to do if it was ever possible before you know technology in the future or whatever. Go back and watch something with the watch it for the first time. You know that that would just be awesome. But uh, <clears throat> but yeah, there was like this period there where I just couldn't watch Dawn of the Dead without having to like spot like the van in the background when they're moving the trucks, and uh, you, I, I would always just like spot it. Like I, I would just be looking. At a, I, I guess it was at a point where I'd seen the movie so many goddamn times that I was just looking for anything new. And I just kept finding all these little like, oh, there, there's, you can see this, that shot, or you can see this person in the reflection of the glass over here. Or, uh, <clears throat> but I eventually got past that, I think. I was just kind of like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you can see the trampoline and all that. But that was like a period of my life where I was like super obsessed with that. Uh, let's see, Greg Nicotero is the one that filmed the mall walk. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Uh, Dave Burian's in there as well. And, and they actually mentioned Dave's name in the uh, Savini uh, Stavrakis commentary in that UK DVD as well. Because they were like, uh, I think it was during the, uh, the, the airport scene where Tom's like, I think this airport still exists. And Chris uh, Stavrakis is like, yeah, this guy Dave Burian found it and he says it still exists, and it's, it's kind of funny now when you think about it, because with the internet, I mean, everybody knows where everything is now, um, thanks to guys like Dave Burian and, and Lawrence DeVincent and Matt Blasey and guys like that, Garrett Kent, who track this shit down and and tell people where it's at, you know, so everybody can have access to it. Uh, Synthetic, do you have the Dawn of the Dead special soundtrack with the mall and library music? Good stuff. I got it in 1997. I have so many different soundtracks of Dawn of the Dead. I have the one, it's the yellow cover. It's got all the library music and stuff on it. I have that on vinyl. I have, I have a lot of the Goblin soundtracks um, on vinyl as well. Different releases, like they've put out so many over the years. A lot of the live stuff, the Demonia I have a lot of them. I don't remember special soundtrack with the mall and library music. Good stuff. Got 97. I don't think I have that. I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't have it. Um, was that an actual, let me ask you this. Is that an actual release or was it kind of like a bootleg? Cause I do know that there are bootlegs out there where people, um, I think, I think Christopher Rock is actually is one of them that actually cut all of the music, found all of the music from Don, the, the li all the library music, all the goblin music and like cut it in sequence to the movie. Um, I think that's out there somewhere. I think I've seen that on eBay before. Um, but I don't recall if I have that or not. Uh, John says, true. I listened to the Rubenstein one recently, tons of info in the beginning, but it took about three or four times because I kept falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about Rubenstein's voice. He's got a very mellow, like, well, there was a time when me and George were it's just a very, you know, monotone sounding voice. It can, it can lull you to sleep. Um, uh, let me see. I'm trying to catch up with all these comments here. In case you missed it, the French poster is the landscape version with uh, different artwork. Really nice landscape. I'll have to look that up. I'm not sure. Not popping into my head. Which one is the machete zombie? The yellow... I, I thought that was the French poster. Uh, problem is all those photos are in terrible quality. Also, Rubenstein is wrong because the second sight is the best uh, Is the best because it has everything you could possibly want or possibly get, plus it's 4K, everyone. Yeah, that's true. Um, I did... 
What was I? I mean, maybe it was the Martin. I'm trying to remember. There was something about that Second Sight 4K that Rubenstein would not allow access to. I don't know. I'll have to think of it. I'm blanking on it, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree, but I think in terms of the U S I mean, I think Rubenstein's like, this is it. I don't know why Rubenstein, I guess maybe second sight just made a hell of a deal with Rubenstein to, you know, release Martin and Dawn and those big box set special, special edition releases. I'm sure Rubenstein isn't very happy that uh, people in the U S were able to get their hands on them, but you know, it is what it is in this day and age. You, you know, there you, you can get, you know, shit from overseas now it's not uh not that crazy but yeah i do i do agree i think uh i do think that second sight box set is the absolute best release that's out there right now uh did you guys see the unreal engine version of the monrovo mall for a failed homebrew game of dawn of the dead is incredible minus the zombies in a demo i think i think i have seen that yeah and i, I <laughs> if it's the one you're talking about it looks kind of like is it the one that they kind of based off of the Land of the Dead video game? Is it like a mod or something? That's I think that's the one that I saw. It was like a mod for the Land of the old Land of the Dead uh, Road to Fiddler's Green video game. Um, that's the one I and that's the one that I'm just like, you know, take my money. Like I'll put that game out. I'll I'll buy it. I don't even really play games video games too much anymore. But you put that out, I'll fucking buy it. I don't care. I'll play the shit out of that. It has the real extra soundtrack release. I need to look it up. Okay. Uh, let's see. John says, I don't think that's a legit release. The Johnny Truck uh, incidental music release came out in 2004, and that was the first time the library. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's so much shit out there, guys. <laughs> there's so much out there. And that's it's. And that's the thing, like, you know, we're talking about we're down to, like, the final. <clears throat> so we had the Ultimate Edition come out in 2004. There's a lot out there. You look on eBay. Um, but in terms of like legit, real releases, the last two that we've gotten up to this point. <clears throat> so after that box set came out, they decided to put out the Argento cut on its own uh, with its own release. Divi Max release. This came out 2005, so a year after the box set came out. Um, I do love this fucking artwork. This is probably one of my favorite Dawn of the Dead posters is this zombie poster with all the, although I've always thought it was funny. Like the airport zombie looks like he's wearing a raincoat and he has extremely like freakishly long arms. He look, kind of looks like he has like monkey arms or something, but I've always loved this artwork. Um, I ended up buying this years after the fact. I never felt the need to buy this because I already had it like in that box set. Um, but it's cool to have. I love, like I said, love the artwork. It, it's very reminiscent. It's pretty much all the same. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much the exact same disc um, that was included in that box set. So this one's got a, you know, a different cover on the disc. Um, so yeah, so they they put this out after the box set, a year after the box set. And then two years after that, when <clears throat> in the infancy of Blu-ray, and this is the last edition of Dawn of the Dead that we have gotten in the United States up to this point, and that is, of course, the Anchor Bay Blu-ray from 2007. This one's autographed by Tom Savini. Um, and this is one that I did not have for many, many years, and it's kind of hard to find now. I mean, it's out of print. Um Typically, they'll go like I've, I've seen them in the wild here recently. I saw one at uh, we have a store in Nashville called McKay's a friend of mine was found it and was able to pick it up for uh, 20 bucks. I was like, he, <laughs> he showed that to me. I was like, 20 bucks, dude, you should fucking pick that up. He's like, oh, I did. Don't worry about it. Because typically anything lower than 50 bucks is a pretty good price on this sucker now, um, which I don't. The transfer on this is not the greatest because it's really, like I said, this was the beginning of Blu-ray and high-definition releases. So uh, this is pretty much the uh, the transfer that they used was pretty much the exact same transfer from the DVD. They just kind of ported it over to this Blu-ray and put it in 1080p or whatever. Um, but yeah, if, if you're in the United States and you don't have a region-free player, 
um, or a 4K player, I guess, because 4Ks are all region free. So that, if you guys don't know that, um, only the shitty thing about that though is if you buy like the Dawn box set, you can watch the the films that are in 4K because 4K is region free, but you can't watch any of the bonus features and the features. I mean, there's a whole Blu-ray bonus features disc in that box set, and the features on that are fucking amazing. Um, but yeah, this Blu-ray came out 2007. And like I said, it's pretty much a lot of the the features and shit on it. <clears throat> Let me open it up. I started it in plastic from it's like it's got Tom Savini's autograph on it. By God, I gotta preserve this motherfucker. Pretty much no new features on it, really. Uh nothing nothing I can really see. It's got the audio commentary with George, Tom, and Chris and Perry Martin on it. It's got fast film facts. That's fun, I guess. Uh, it's got the Dead Will Walk feature at onset home movies, which the home movies that the the first time that we that I saw those Ralph Langer um, Super Eight home movie footage was in that box set, so that's included on this as well. And it had commentary, but I think it was commentary. I forget which order it happened in. I think the first. I guess I can look it up here in a second, but I think the first. Uh, they ate the Super 8 footage or whatever from Ralph Langer. I think it had Robert Langer, his brother's commentary over it, and then the Ralph Langer commentary. I don't think he did that until, maybe wrong, but the Second Sight box set, I think, is when we got the Ralph Langer. Anyway. <laughs> Completely off topic and off point, but... Yeah, I just think it's... You look at the history of Dawn of the Dead on, on home video, going from, you know, beta all the way to Blu-ray, and You can see the evolution of the film just in terms of like a fan perspective going from, you know, just your theatrical cut. And then all of a sudden we get a director's cut and all of a sudden we get the European cut. And then all of a sudden, you know, you can get this overseas. But this is the ultimate cut or what do you know? They call it. The, what do they call it on this? I guess this would be considered the ultimate cut. This is like a steel book lenticular cover or whatever this is the ultimate cut. this is literally everything the complete cut is what they call this one um but this has got every bit of it so there's so many different versions of dawn out there that you can get it now at this point um they're out there just look for it go get it um it, uh, ebay amazon i don't I mean, i'm sure you can find something on amazon but ebay's the way to go man if if i understand there's so many so many releases of everything else. And that's kind of a thing, too, that I've always kind of said, like, when it comes to Richard Rubenstein, it's like, I'm kind of grateful that he hasn't just pimped this movie out to death. Like, like you know, like when I see, like, all the different releases of Halloween, like John Carpenter's Halloween that are out there, or all the releases of Evil Dead and Army of Darkness, it's like, God damn, you know, like... <clears throat> I'm kind of glad that Rubenstein is kind of keeping it close to the vest, you know. Um, I'm glad because to me, like Dawn of the Dead has always been kind of like my, my little secret. I think that's why I love the movie as much as I do. It always, always, always felt like just my little secret. It's like if I grew up and my favorite movie was Friday the Thirteenth. It's like everybody knows Friday the Thirteenth. You know, everybody at school knows Friday the Thirteenth. Everybody knows Jason. Like if if I grew up and fell in love with Halloween. Everybody knows Halloween. My grandparents love Halloween. Like, everybody loves Michael Myers. Um, but there's something special about Dawn of the Dead, because it just feels like it's my secret. It's like, I know I know what the greatest fucking movie ever made was, and most people don't know. They Like, they just don't know. Um, and Rubenstein's kind of preserved that for me a little bit uh, by not releasing this all the time. Like, there's not a new release of Dawn of the Dead every fucking year like there is of Halloween or something like that. But at the same time, 17 fucking years, let's go. Like It's time for something new here in the States. Like, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just give me a 4K. Just give me a fucking, you know, just a regular 4K. Maybe do a different bonus feature. I'd love a different commentary, too. There's, there, you know, you could get, uh, I know there's a, there's a Mike Gornick, Debins, Tom Davinsky, Lee Carr commentary on the, uh, I think it's the French box set. That's a great commentary. Get Gornick and Dubinsky. 
shit, sit them down again, make them watch it again. I'd love to, I could listen to Gornick and Dubinsky talk about Dawn of the Dead or any of those Romero films for hours. And I wouldn't, wouldn't blink. I would just be like, this is amazing. Um, yeah. I mean, give us something. I mean, like I said, I know maybe he's holding out for, you know, a package deal with Martin or something like that. But I mean, there's so many studios out there now that would, that could do Dawn justice um, here in the States. I mean, second sight, I mean, you could say they did Dawn of the Dead justice, um, but it's just not, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We, we need something here in the U S I, f- I feel like, um, I thought maybe there would be something coming because we've gotten a, you know, last year or two, the, well, I can't even say last year now, 2022, uh, we got Dawn in 3D come out in theaters, and it was kind of like, okay, well, maybe maybe Rubenstein's kind of building up to something here. And then, of course, last uh, October, they put Dawn back in theaters in 2D, just a regular version of Dawn. Um, so maybe there's something coming. I don't know. Maybe Rubenstein's starting to play with the idea of... Because I know he put a lot of money into that 3D transfer and all that, and I think maybe he's, part of him's trying to re- recoup some of that money. Uh, I've heard some figures that I don't I don't know for sure if they're right, but I mean he put a easily put more money into the three D, you know, uh, that's what I'm looking for transfer. Or, um, that's another word I'm thinking of, but I can't think of it right now. But he put way more money into that than it actually took to make the fucking movie. So. <laughs> So maybe he, there's a part of him that's just like desperately trying to recoup some of that money. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I, I do. I, I think it's time that we get something here in the States for both Don and Martin, especially since, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Ruben's seen, how he feels about physical media at this point. Like I mean, there may be more of an opportunity to do something with streaming. I don't know. There's just, you know, we, we don't know. That man's such a goddamn mystery, and nobody really knows what uh, what's going on in his head. Which is why when I was on uh, Grande's channel, we were talking about uh, you know Romero in the '90s, and he opened with a couple of questions. And one of the questions was if you could if you could sit down and have dinner with anybody from the you know Romero's you know universe or whatever, who would it be? And, and Rubenstein was my first answer because I would just like to talk to him and be like, you know, what are you? How do, how do you see this? Like, how do how do you see your your role in preserving George's legacy? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he feel because I know, you know, say what you want about Richard Rubenstein and and George and R- Richard. I don't think really ever had a real beef or anything. They, they didn't they didn't split ways um, on bad terms or anything like that. Um, they were very friendly. They did commentaries years later. Of course, they they were on the uh, they did the Martin commentary together years later on that uh, Martin DVD. I think it was the Lionsgate. Um, and Richards always said great things about George, and George has never said anything bad about Richard. Now I've heard other people say bad things about Richard, but in terms of George, they I think they really had a love and respect for each other. Um because I think they were both at their best when they were together and working together. And I think they both know that. And I wonder if there is a part of, of Richard who maybe feels like it is his duty to preserve George's legacy in some way and not, you know, prostitute it out every couple of years to make a buck. I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, I don't know. I've never talked to, never talked to the guy. I don't, I don't think I ever will, <laughs> but that would be one, one guy that I would love to to just, you know, talk with and figure out, you know, what's going on up there in that head of his. Um, Let me get back here. I'm far behind on these comments, guys. Let's see. John says, what I don't understand is the UK in the is in the UK is a Romero territory. So they had to get the rights from Rubenstein. So why not release it here? That's a good question. I, I wondered that, too. I wonder what the. What's different about because I know it's the UK is part of Romero's territory, along with the US, Canada, English speaking countries, basically, I think was what the deal kind of was. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
why not release here? Can't interfere with the 3D because A, he hardly ever screens it. That's, that's true. Uh, and B, you can't even watch the 3D at home anyway. And that's very true too. Unless you have a projector. I do have a 3D, a Blu-ray, 3D Blu-ray of uh, Zombie Dawn of the Dead. Where I've never watched it in 3D, so I don't know how good it looks or how well it works. But uh, I, what country is this? German? I think this is a German... Uh, release of Dawn of the Dead in 3D that I bought. Apparently, that goes for quite a bit of money now too. I don't, I don't remember how much I spent for it, but wasn't wasn't too much. Uh, let's see, uh, John. Let's see, Synthetic says the CD is, I have was commercial, but I forgot what it was called. It may be the same one he has the vinyl for. Yeah, it's it's. Um, if you hang on a second, let me go grab it. And I'll I'll put it up. And we'll see. Uh, let's see if it's the same one I'm talking. Well, if I can find it. Ah, couldn't find the vinyl it's somewhere around here, but I do have the CD. Is this the one you're talking about? It's got the yellow cover on it because this has got all the the library tracks. It's got the gonk and because I'm a man, I'm a man. I actually picked that up at um, Texas Frightmare Weekend 2008. This CD, I was so excited when I saw it because I was like, I didn't think any of this music because this was 2008 is when I picked this up. So this is probably quite a few years after after the time period you're talking about but uh but yeah that's the one that i'm talking about i don't know if that's the same one but that's the first time i ever saw like an actual release with the library music and shit on it um let's see 1911 guitar dude waxwork just put out an awesome vinyl release of dawn library tracks not sure if it has any difference versus the second size cds but i had to have it too yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned that earlier, too. Uh, that looks like a pretty badass release. Um, I, I didn't get it. I don't know if I will now because trying to buy it after the fact, looking on eBay, I mean, it looks like they're going for for quite a few dollars. Um, I think I saw one the other day. It was up to like 230 bucks or something like that. But this was like overseas, um, the UK, I believe. But yeah, it looks like an amazing release. Um is it just the is it just the library tracks? Because I was under the impression that it was the library tracks and the Goblin soundtrack. Um, so is it just the library tracks, or or is it both? Uh, John says you'll have to find. It. I'm extremely curious. I think that may be a professional bootleg because I think I know which version you're talking about. Interesting. Um, it says it's uh, identical. Okay, same cues. Okay, so it's, I guess it's just the. Library tracks, then, I guess. Uh, yes, yeah, so it was a Land of the Dead conversion, but it looks so cool with all the old store names and architecture. Yep, that's the one that I uh, that uh, that I saw. I watched. I think there's like two or three videos on there. The guy I was working with, and uh, it's got the music and stuff to it. And I think I, I think if you go and actually look at those videos, I may have commented on it at one point, just saying like, "Just take my fucking money, like make this, and I'll, I'll fucking do it. I'll, I'll buy it." Uh, let's see, Synthetic says someone should do a GTA game conversion for 1978 Dawn of the Dead. The old Doom version was pretty bad. That would be awesome. Like, I know they did, um, oh, what was that game called? Dead, uh, Dead Rising, I think was the game, like, that came out, like, was it PS3 or PS4? Early days of PS4, or PS3, I can't remember. Um, but I remember when that came out, I was just like, holy shit, they made a... They made a Dawn of the Dead game as close to a Dawn of the Dead game as I felt like we would ever, ever get. But hey, at this point, you never know, guys. I mean, shit, we've gotten a Friday the 13th game. They just put out a Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. If you would have told me 20 years ago that we would be, you know, that we would have an actual Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game with all the actual characters like, you know, Leatherface and the cook and the hitchhiker and all, you know, I would have said no freaking way. So maybe I don't know. 
if if Rubenstein could feels like he could make a buck off of it, I'm sure we will see. Uh, we may see a Dawn of the Dead officially licensed video game, which if we ever did, I mean, that would be another one of my dreams come true. Literally, I've had dreams where I've played a Dawn of the Dead video game. As I feel like probably most people have had that, if you're a huge Dawn fan. I bought almost all those versions when they were brand new. In fact, you made me realize, I think I gave my Divi Max DVD away. Yeah, and P I, I almost did the exact same thing. I think I sold one of these, and I was able to pick up another version because I didn't realize that they were two different versions uh, of the, the pretty much the same disc, just different um one pre-box set post-box set no love for the umd version no i guess i missed out on that one uh, umd that was a thing that i just I was completely off my fucking radar i don't even know like, was that a playstation thing was like where you could watch it um completely off my radar that that, that was and i think that was off most people most people were most people's radars because when it came out it was just not not a huge thing, if I remember correctly. I do see those out and about on eBay now. The UMD release. But yeah, I kind of forgot about that one. Good catch, good catch. <laughs> uh, but I feel like he's strangling... I feel like he's... I feel he's strangling release, preventing newer fans from discovering. That's true, too. Um, yeah, no, that's very true. I mean, I guess maybe trying to put it in theaters again... Maybe that was a way where he was trying, trying to test the waters to see how much, which I, which is why I encourage, you know, everybody who loves the film to just go see it. Like just, just to show that, you know, they sold tickets to it. You know, I mean, the, the couple of the, the 3d ones that I went to, I mean, in comparison to pretty much any other time I go to the theater, I mean, it was pretty much the same. Like if I, 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 it's been so long since I've been, I've sat in a packed theater to watch a movie. Like we went to see, me and my buddy went to see The Iron Claw on opening night, um, a few weeks back, and we were the only motherfuckers in the theater. Friday night, seven p.m. showing of the Iron, and we were the only people in that fucking theater. Um, so in comparison, I mean, you know, uh, the two D. I went to see it on like like a Sunday night in the middle of a fucking storm. So it was just me and a couple other people. But the 3D, uh, the 3D screenings were, were 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 pretty full, and it was a pretty fun experience because people were enjoying it. I mean, people laughing and having a good time with it. I, I, I told a story about the guy that was sitting next to me who just would crack up anytime Jay Stover was on the fucking screen because he'd have the you know the rifle and and he would just be like every time you'd see him in the background, you hear this guy like, oh, he's still got that damn gun, you know. At that I mean, Clarksville, Tennessee, for you there, folks. Um, uh, not sure though. How can you recoup money if you don't license it anywhere? I mean, yeah, that's the obvious argument. It's like, think about how much money Rubenstein's losing. But again, it's his money to lose. So you know, who's to say? <laughs> Who are we? Oh, the Waxwork soundtrack comp is sold out. Need to look around. Good luck. That's all I can say. Because yeah, I I I, I just. I blanked on it when it as it was coming out and I just, I didn't pick it up. But uh, now looking back, I kind of wish I would have, cause looking at it now, like, like I said, found, found some copies on eBay, but they were way too fucking expensive. Like 150, 175 bucks. Uh, synthetic. My girlfriend's 3d plasma TV was great, but broken now. Sorry to hear that. Plasma TV. That's a thing you don't see too much of anymore. That is the one. Okay, so this is the one we're talking about. So this is the one that Synthetic's been talking about. When did this come out? So this is 2004 is when this came out. Um, and you said you had your, what did you say, 90? Did you say 2004 or 97? I can't remember. But yeah, this this is 2004 when this came out. I have it on vinyl somewhere. I used to have it up. Some, I, I don't fucking know anymore. <clears throat> Oh, uh, yeah, that one is very incomplete. I was so excited when I heard about it. Got that one, too, when it was released. Yeah. Like I said, I found this at a table at Texas Frightmare Weekend, the same weekend that I met George for the first time. And first time I met everybody for the first time, Ken, Scott, and Tom. And that was such an amazing convention. Texas Frightmare Weekend, 2008, 40th anniversary of Night of the Living Dead. Man. I, I met 
uh, Bill Heinzman was there, George Kassana. That was where I met Howard Sherman. Um, uh, Sharon and Clayton Hill were both there. And those, they were so, so cool. Joe Pilato was there that weekend. Eugene Clark. I mean, every it, it was just, I mean, even they even had, um, it was right around the same time the Diary of the Dead had just come out. And they had Sean Roberts and the, uh, the, the, fuck, what's her name? The female lead in Day of Diary of the Dead. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, super big on diary of the dead but um they were there signing autographs so i mean that was a, a huge romero convention that year at texas frightmare week and on top of having malcolm mcdowell and elvira was there dario was supposed to be there that year too he uh could make it which is a huge disappointment but <clears throat> Uh, John said the vinyl is much rarer though, only made 500 copies. Yeah, I, when I bought it, I found it on Discogs. Somebody was selling it for 75 bucks, I think. So I, I was it 50 or 75, somewhere around there, more than I would usually spend on a, on a record, really. But when I saw it, I was like, I gotta have that. So I have it somewhere around here. But yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty rare. But they're actually starting to pop up a little more here recently. I've noticed. Um, yeah, I think ever since we've gotten. I think ever since people got either the box set from Second Sight that has all the all the music on it, or especially with this waxwork release coming out, I think we may start seeing some people trying to trying to sell those, make a make a pretty little profit off of them. Uh, John says the uh, waxwork is like ninety five percent of the library tracks used in the theatrical. Uh, it's missing a handful due to space constraints. No Goblin. Okay. Huh. How complete? So in the second sight version, how complete is that? I know there's it's missing a few. I know for sure, but I, I'm guessing it's is Waxwork pretty much just releasing basically the the music that that's on that CD in the second sight box set. Are they pretty much just releasing that on vinyl? Is is basically what's what the situation is? Because that I mean that 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 had way more than what's up. Because this one only has. Let's see 14 tracks on this one so this is definitely not all of it because i mean i forget i do know george used a lot of different type a lot of different music on that if even in like the first so if you listen at the opening at the very beginning of dawn of the dead when we see fran up against the red carpeted wall and you hear that music and it's like damn George uses like four or five different tracks and blends them all together to make that opening music all through the, the TV studio. Like he mixed, you know, uh, Goblin, he mixed library music. I mean, it's just mixed it all together and made this like one long piece of music. It's pretty incredible. I mean, that's one thing I, I always talk about George, the editor in terms of just like visual, like the you know visual editor. But in terms of the way he would edit music uh, is, is highly underrated. I mean, he was a fucking genius at that. Uh, the way he could just pick like, you know, just fucking needle drop and library tracks and just kind of make something out of it. I always just thought was uh, amazing. Uh, Dead Rising was OK. Yeah, I didn't love the game. I just remember when it came out and hearing about it, I was like super, super excited about it. Uh, the Friday 13th game was pretty good. Never played it. Never played it. Uh, let's see. Video format for PSP? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I never had a PSP or anything like that. Uh, but less and less people are going to theaters anyway, so it was silly. Yeah, stream it everywhere. Make it easily accessible instead of possibly losing anything on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. There's, it's not streaming anywhere. It's It's available for free on YouTube. So I don't know what what good that's doing anybody, but it is what it is. <laughs> Jay Stover was an early bub. That that's <laughs> that is true. That is a good point. I've always had my thing with the the Jay Stover zombie. My my theory is there's still a part of like you know the the instinct and all that, but there's still a part of who they were when they were alive that still exists inside of them. Um, my thing was, was he trying to hold, cause he always holds, you know, the barrel pointed straight to his head. Was he trying to, you know, like somebody pull this trigger, like put me out of my misery. I don't know. That's just a off, you know, half brained theory of mine that maybe the, 
the memory of him inside. He didn't want to be a zombie. So somebody, he's just holding this gun here, like trying to get somebody to figure out how to pull this trigger. And he finds, you know, he's, he takes the other rifle from Peter at the end of the movie. And he's like, well, this is more powerful. So maybe this will do the trick even quicker. I don't know. <laughs> just a little theory I always had about the, about that zombie. Oh, let's see. Dirk, what's up, man? Good to see you in here, man. It's been a been a real fun show and tell edition of uh stream here tonight. Got to whip out all my uh my US releases of Dawn of the Dead. So that's always pretty fun. John said that's great. Even though I was there for all of these releases and obsessed with this stuff, I never met a lot of those people who passed, like George. You never met George, man. That sucks. George is yeah, I it's uh <laughs> and my dad pointed this out when I told him we were going, me and my uh, cousin were taking a trip to uh, Texas to, to meet George and all that finally. And he was like, well, what if you get there and you meet him and he's just like this crotchety old bastard? <laughs> I was like, yeah, like I never really even thought of that. Like, what if he is just like, it would just crush my little pee pick and soul. But, uh, but no, like when I went, when you, <sighs> when i met george he, he, they always say like don't meet your heroes because you'll always be disappointed or whatever and that just wasn't the case at all like it was just like he's as cool and nice and kind as you hoped and expected him to be and uh i think that's why george has such a following to this day and it's hard for especially if you if you're a huge fan of george and you're a huge fan of his films it's hard for you to criticize um because no, nobody is above criticism. George, not everything George did was amazing. Not everything George did was the best. But when you know that the guy behind it has, when you know, like, when you know that his intentions are pure and he has a good heart and he's coming from the right place and he's coming from it, you know, it's coming at it from a place of love and enthusiasm and, you know, it's hard to criticize that, you know, it's, it's hard to, and I think that's why George is kind of different than a lot of other films. Like George, the <laughs> George Romero is completely different than John Carpenter. Whereas like Carpenter is like, yeah, yeah John Carpenter is the epitome of love the art, not the artist. Um, I, I, I mean, not to say that John Carpenter is a bad guy or anything is, I mean, he's, but he comes off kind of like, fuck you. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, fuck you. I don't want to do this. Uh, uh, you like my movies? Why? You're, uh. I've heard so many stories. Same with Tom in a way, um, Savini, where it's kind of like, he, they're all just kind of like, why are you bothering me with this stuff? Oh, you liked Halloween? Good for you. Like, uh. George never liked that. If you told George you liked anything that he did, he was just like, why? Like, it's just, I just made a movie. I don't know. He's just, just so humble. And so, uh, such a, such a sweet, sweet man. Um, uh, see, I missed out meeting George Romero and seeing, uh, Edgar. I don't know that guy, Edgar Froese. I'm sure I'm butchering that from Tangerine Dream before he died. I met Stan Winston and the guys from Goblin when, uh, together uh so had some good moments yeah i'd love to meet uh I, I i don't know how well their english is but or how good their english is but i'd love to meet goblin um just the guys that are still you know there. claudio i think speaks a little uh i think he's i think his english is okay but uh but yeah just those guys i mean to meet you know dario like I, like I thought he was going to meet him and and at texas frightmare in 2008 and he had to back out and that was that sucked but that, that's just, that's a living legend that, you know, he's not going to be around forever. You know, they're not, a lot of these people are not going to be around forever. That's why I say like, um, like when you said you haven't been to Monroeville Mall yet, like I said, go to the Living Dead Weekend and, and, and meet these people. Let them know because everybody, most everybody that, that you're going to meet there, super, super cool. They love interacting with the fans. And it's such a laid back atmosphere. A, you're, you're in the Monroeville Mall. You're surrounded by people who love what you love and you're surrounded by the people who made it and you can go up to these people and introduce yourself and tell them how much you appreciate them and how, and because a lot of these people are just fucking normal people. You know, a lot of the people that they bring in who are like, Oh, it's like all the zombies and stuff from Dawn of the dead. Like they're just people that just are like going to work Monday, but this weekend they get to come and say like, Hey, yeah, you know, 45 years ago we made this movie at this mall and it was a good time. We had fun and they come to celebrate it like everybody else. You know, the, a lot of them are just, are fans like we are um 
it's just it's it's really cool. So yeah, you know, time time's undefeated. So there's no better time than the present to to do these things. If there's something you want to do, do it. Whether it's visit, you know, the Monroeville Mall or fucking get your own camera and write your own script and make your own fucking movie. <clears throat> do it. Because God, God knows other people are doing it. And it's not always the best. We'll just say that. <laughs> I wonder about a lot of these movies. Uh, where are we at? <clears throat> John says the cans cut uses uh, just Cosmo co <laughs> the tongue twister Cosmogony too, but for the theatrical he added more on top of it. Yeah, highly underrated how he used music. Going to be talking about that soon. Yeah, I mean it's 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 pretty amazing. Um, he is even going back to like Martin his use of uh, Donald Rubenstein's. Uh, score for Martin the way he would he kind of slowed it down at points to kind of to change and Donald talks about that I think he talked about it in the commentary on Martin where he was just blown away the first time he saw Martin and was just blown away you know seeing what George could do with his music like in terms of just like pacing and and, and the way he would use it in the film um, yeah highly highly underrated in that aspect Wow, a suicidal zombie. Yeah, I mean that that's that's just my theory. I don't know. Maybe he maybe he was just fascinated by that. I don't know, but we'll we'll see. <clears throat> Carpenter is a grumpy chain smoking dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh see, John says, I love them both. George, I want to hug and say thanks. But Carpenter I love because he's no bullshit. Yeah, that is very true. I do appreciate Carpenter in that aspect. He is definitely no bullshit. Um, he'll, I mean, especially at this stage in his life, he, he, he'll kind of say what's on his mind and he says what he says and means, means what he says, you know, type of thing. Uh, Garrett, what's up, man? Born to be rad in the house. We've got the, got the big dogs in here tonight. What's up, man? Popping in and say, what's up? Always love Romero talk. I appreciate it, my man. It's, it's been a lot of Romero talk tonight. It's been a, <clears throat> a lot of, lot of physical media, a lot of show and tell tonight. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. I had to get it out. Cause I, I took a week, you know, a week off last week. And like I said, kind of went down the Dawn rabbit hole again. And I've just been itching to get back at it and, and just talk Dawn, which is Lord. Like I said, Lord knows I can talk about it. I've actually been contemplating all night about getting that big limited set from umbrella for monkey shines. Interesting. What do I have? I got, The only edition I have this version of Monkey Shines from Eureka. It's a um, what country? Because I is there there is a I think I think Scream Factory or Shout Factory did a Monkey Shines release a few years ago. They're kind of hard to find now. They're out of print, but uh, not sure where what country I got this from. It's maybe UK, I believe Eureka. Is, is UK based, but yeah, this is this is the only version of Monkey Shines that I have on Blu-ray. I have the DVD as well, but uh, yeah, man, get back in there. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm actually not too familiar with the uh, the limited set from Umbrella for Monkey Shines. I have to look that up. <laughs> Uh, let's see, John, you have no idea what kind of family atmosphere it has. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about Living Dead Weekend. I'm glad I went now. And uh, had I have known what kind of atmosphere it was, I would have been there day one. Yeah, first, my first Living Dead Weekend was 2021. My original plan was to go for the uh, 2018 40th anniversary when they had, you know, the 40 guests. And uh, I didn't make it that year. I was planning on it. I actually had time off from work and planned the trip and all that but had some personal shit go down during that time period so i didn't didn't quite make it um but yeah i'm, I'm glad I, I that's why i go i that's why i go like <laughs> ever since 2021 i've been to the, every one of the monroeville ever since then i went to the evan city one back in october anyone you get to it's pretty it's amazing it's a laid-back fun atmosphere everybody's super cool and like i said you're just kind of in you're in your element and everybody speaks the same language. It's, it's really, really fun. Pretty cool. Uh, Goblin was cool. They signed my portable scent. Simonetti is a funny guy. Maranti and uh, Guarini were less personable. Yeah, I could see that. Simonetti, I bet, would be pretty cool. 
he uh, interviews and stuff like that. I, I feel like uh, I always feel like he's he's pretty laid back, and chill, kind of good sense of humor about him. Synthetic. Even Carpenter's puff or smoke puff of smoke makes an appearance in the original Halloween. Grumpy but talented. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, the scene where uh, Michael Myers is coming over there, where she where Michael Myers is behind the bush, and uh, I think Annie runs up, hits the bush. You can see the smoke. Yeah. It's amazing to me. I guess it's because, you know, he, he's such a, a thin, you know, kind of guy. It's amazing to me that he's still, he, he has outlived George and Wes and Toby and all the other guys that were, he was kind of in that same, which I guess he's a young, he was younger than George. Definitely. When, when he, so like, let's say Halloween, how old was John Carpenter? Cause George, when, when, when George did Dawn of the Dead, George was, 30 so 19 so 38 37 somewhere around there so carpenter was definitely younger but i mean god damn and uh, yeah i know george was quite a chain smoker too um but wes i mean that was that wasn't that was a shocker the fact that uh that that west i mean i don't think west was a real smoker or anything like that i know toby hooper smoked cigars that was his big thing um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's just crazy to me to think that did Carpenter's outlived them all at this point, other than I guess Cronenberg, Cronenberg is still out there. Cronenberg, that dude, I wouldn't be surprised if Cronenberg lived to be fucking a hundred easily. Cause that dude, I, how old is Cronenberg? He's in his eighties now, right? And he's still making movies and still, still looks spry. So uh, Gary says I have some screen. I have the Scream Factory blue, but the umbrella set looks sick. It's in a big chunky box with a big book and cards and such. Uh, love the Don 3D poster. Oh, yeah, thanks, man. I was able to luckily be able to pick one up. The the they put out that new poster this year when they put out the uh, the two D version in theaters. I haven't been able to get my hands on. It. That was the thing too. Is like some of the theaters I went to to, to watch Don. Uh, they didn't even have posters up or nothing for it. So it's, it was pretty amazing that there were as many people there to watch it as, as there were. Um, it's cool to feel cool to see a film like monkey shines getting a lot of love from uh, like that from a company. Yeah. I mean, monkey shines the dark half. I know I do have the screen factory dark half and that's out of print now. I though I feel like that would probably be close to being due for another, another release of some type on 4k. I think, I think that would look great on 4k actually. Um, I do know we're getting a night 90 release soon. I, I'm, I'm, I know that I'm, I'm not <laughs> mainly because Tom kind of let it out of the bag, but from everything, all the information that I've been able to gather, I do know that there's a night 90 release coming soon. I think I th I'm guessing it'll probably be Sony that puts it out. Cause I think they own the rights to it. Um, I think I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 4K, but I'm not sure. Um, what else needs to come out? Because I know we talk about, you know, Dawn and Martin needing releases desperately here in the U.S. Um, Knight Riders has had, you know, had some pretty, has a shout release, uh, had an arrow release overseas. Creep Show, we're getting another Creep Show uh, Steelbook release, Walmart exclusive coming up uh, in February. Uh, which the still book looks amazing, but uh, I, one I do know that I hear a lot of people talking about desperately wanting is a uh, Day of the Dead 4K, which I'm surprised they haven't done it yet. I don't know why they haven't because Scream Factory is synonymous with re releasing a lot of their titles just in 4K because they did a good job with the Blu ray release, but that's been quite a few years now since that came out, so I'm very surprised that it hasn't uh, hasn't had a 4K release yet. So I would be surprised to see that coming out here in the next couple of years. Because that's one I hear a lot of people talk about is, you know, we need Day of the Dead on 4K. Um, is, there a, is there a 4K release of Day of the Dead overseas at all? Anybody know? I can't think of one right now off the top of my head. Yeah, not, not that I can think of. There's blue, there's definitely Blu-ray releases, but... Uh, I don't know if Day has a 4K release anywhere yet. I don't know. All I know is I'm waiting for Santa Claus on 4K. That's what we need. I don't know why I watched that movie. That's so bad. It was fun. I mean, what the hell? 
Uh, also, I apologize for the way my sentences have been coming out and missing words. I didn't realize how hard it is to type while listening to someone speaking. Oh, don't worry about it, man. When I'm uh, I'm always in the chats for for various streams and stuff, and I, I understand how that is, especially when you're trying to get something out and <clears throat> trying to hear what you know. It, 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 it's a little uh, but no, it's been totally fine, man. Uh, it's been said that the more you swear, the longer you live. Stress for yeah, that's that's true. That would make sense for uh, for John, Mr. Carpenter there. Was the Dawn 3D version worth watching? Yeah, I think it was. I didn't know what to expect going on. And, and I'll say this as a person who does not like 3D at all. Like, I hate 3D. As a person who wears glasses, like, to have to wear the 3D glasses over my glasses is not a fun way for me to experience a film. The only other movie I've ever seen in a theater in 3D was Avatar when it came out, because that was kind of the thing. You had to see Avatar in 3D. But I will say I was I was kind of skeptical going in because I was like, Dawn doesn't really need 3D. Like it's not that doesn't some that doesn't need to be something that that needs to be like <laughs> like Dawn doesn't need to be in 3D. So I didn't know what to expect. I'm not a big fan of 3D as it is. But I went in. I had I, I really enjoyed it. I thought they did a really good job. There was a lot of it, a lot of it is like. So you know when a movie's made for 3D, like Friday the Thirteenth Three, uh, Part Three, they made that for 3D. So they, they you know they do the well, we're going to poke you with this pole or we're going to stab you with this pen. They do that type of shit. So Don wasn't filmed that way. So basically what they did was they kind of layered it. So like the background is kind of on, is uh, it's hard to explain. The background's kind of stationary almost, whereas like everything going on in the foreground is is moving. It, it looked really good. It was pretty well done 3D. But like I said, that's coming from somebody who really doesn't watch a lot of shit in 3D. So I really, I don't really have much of a... Um, uh, frame of reference, I guess, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. There were some moments that would made you kind of jump, um, where you know, blood's coming out of the screen at you, or or like when they shatter the glass, like when uh, how do we get down there? And Peter's got the rifle when he shatters the glass, and the glass kind of falls down, you know, right into your face, type of thing. Uh, it was fun, it was fun. Um, but I'm definitely glad they they came out and, and did a run with the 2D version as well because I do, uh, I, I I preferred that just because I didn't have to wear the fucking glasses or anything and I could just kind of sit and relax and enjoy it. Uh, John, uh, John, yeah, yeah, it was great. Although for some scenes, the froze the background in order to make the foreground 3D pop. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was talking about a second ago. Um, yeah, I don't I'm I'm, I'm sure if 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 Rubenstein can find a partner to do it, I'm sure he can find another theater chain or hell they may regal may do it again at some point um i don't know what their deal looks like or what they got going on with it but it may come back out in 3d and or they may have you know special screenings every now and then i know before it came out in the theaters they uh i think it was 2018 it was the 40th anniversary of dawn of the dead living dead weekend where uh, they played that 3d version of dawn of the dead in the theater in the mall in monrovia which would have been uh Pretty amazing experience. Uh, Garrett says, yeah, I'm sure day is coming. I don't know if Scream still has the rights at this point. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know if they would still have the rights today or not. Um, but luckily, Day of the Dead is one of those that isn't owned by Richard Rubenstein. It's actually owned by Taurus Entertainment, which there's a whole fucking story to that. And the people that own that, which, is, which explains why we get so many terrible day remakes and creep show remakes, but pretty much the people who own the rights to night riders, I think night riders, night riders, creep show and day of the dead, um, United film distribution sold. They had the rights, I believe. And then they sold to a different company, which became Taurus entertainment. And now they have the rights. And I don't know. I don't think if, if scream factory doesn't still have the rights to day of the dead, I'm sure that there'll be somebody else out there who can get those rights because, you know, I mean, how many, how many versions of creep show have we gotten? And then that's why, I mean, it's, if it was, if Rubenstein had the rights to creep show and day of the dead and who knows, like we, we may not, uh, may not be having all these creep show releases. We may still be like, you know, the Warner brothers creep show DVD or would probably be the last thing we would have had. John, there we go. Yeah, see, John's way ahead of me. Taurus owns all those. Uh, is there any other 4K version of Creepshow Night Riders? That's a good question. Um, 
Night Riders, I'm not sure. I don't think there is a 4K version of Night Riders out there. Creep Show, I mean, you know, the Scream Factory one that just came out, which looks fantastic, by the way, uh, if you haven't picked that up and checked that out, uh, which the blue looked good as well, but I was just blown away by how good the 4K looked and sounded. Um, that was a big thing, too. But Night Riders, I don't, I don't know. Night Riders uh, may not have a 4K release anywhere, even overseas, that I know of. What was the last release of Night Riders that came out? It's probably that. Uh, I don't know if it was the Shout Factory or the the Arrow came out mo- most recently. I can't remember, but I, I don't. I don't think they do have a 4K. Uh, Blake Allen, what's up, man? Good to see you in the chat tonight. I got to be in an episode of Creep Show. Okay, I'll. <laughs> Wait, 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 what? <clears throat> it was season three. Got to work with Mr. Harrison that scored Day of the Dead and was Screwdriver in the Year Zombie and done. Wow, okay. Very cool, man. That is very, very cool. Well, did you uh, did you have a role? Or were you just kind of like an extra? Were you uh, on the crew? It says you were in the episode. That's interesting. Hey, if you're still in, the, if you're still in here, man, let me know. Um, Give me some more information on that or shoot me an email. Let me know about it. I'd love to talk to you about that. Cause I, John Harrison's one of those guys. I'm a huge fan of John Harrison. I love his, love his, uh, you know, his scores for day of the dead and creep show and all that, of course. But I love his role in uh, effects, Dusty Nelson's effects from 1979. I thought, I, I, and I told him that when I met him, uh, when I met John Harrison, which I got uh, the, the vinyl, uh, day of the dead back there signed by him that day and i told him i was like dude i i i loved your performance in effects and he just looked at me and was just like really and i was like yeah i mean seriously you were really really good you gave you know, i really enjoyed it and he was like well okay i appreciate that i mean if you if you call that a performance <laughs> and i was like yeah i do it's really really good effects is very underrated I, if you haven't seen effects check it out um but I'm also a big fan of like, his directorial work. And uh, uh, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, was actually the very first, probably in terms of like movie that I remember that had an effect on me. Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, was kind of the first one for me. And I told him, I was like, dude, you're probably the reason why I got into all this to begin with and became fascinated with horror at a very, very young age. Um, I, I love that. I still think, to me, that's Creepshow 3. It tells me Dark said the movie is what Creep Show Three should have been, and yeah, yeah. There, there's an actual Creep Show Three out there, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't suggest it. But good to have you in here, man. It's good to see you uh, dropping by. Um, that, that's pretty, that's pretty damn cool, though. Uh, I don't think 3D version was out here, or I was under a rock. It, I mean, it was in select theaters. It was. Uh, I don't know if you have very many. It was a Regal Theater thing. So if you if you don't have a Regal theater chain out there to me it was i had to travel a little bit to, to find it I, I went to see it twice the first time i had to drive it was about an hour and a half two hour drive and the second time it was about an hour and a half so and i don't live out in the middle of nowhere i mean i live in evansville indiana which is not a huge city or anything but i mean it's kind of a place with a name and we we got we had shit going on here we have an arena and concerts and stuff but and we have like five different movie theaters but none of them are regals so I actually had to to travel quite a bit to, to to catch it. I bought the UK Dawn of the Dead 4K set, but still don't have a 4K TV. I just wanted it. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I did the same thing with that buying a region free player just for uh, uh just for that Italian Midnight Factory release of Zombie. It's the whole reason I got that just to just to be able to watch that uh, just to watch that disc. Let's see. Uh, effects was much better than I expected. Yeah, it was. It, I, it, it was years before I actually got around to seeing effects. Um, and I just, I, I love it. Like I love weird ass movies like that. Anyway, to me, it feels like a very early A twenty four type of film. One of those just weird fucking movies. To me, it kind of falls apart a little bit at the end. Like I felt like they kind of ran out of time and money. I feel like maybe it should have been five or 10 minutes longer. And I think it would have just been fantastic. But the first half, the first, the first three quarters of effects, I think is super, super really well done. I love seeing Joe Pilato just playing a completely different type of role than Captain Rhodes. Um, that's a very, very like heavily Romero. Cause it came out 
effects was what 79 80 so i mean they filmed that right after dawn of the dead it's early tom savini um early john harrison early joe Pilato. um uh who else is in this my uh, pat uh, i know pat booba was a uh, part of the production of that of course one of the boobas um yeah yeah i'm, I'm a huge fan of effects uh, effects are pretty cool. Amusing to see Savini beating up on Plato. Yeah, it's it, it was amusing to see Savini kind of playing a redneck type of character too. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, and Booby Hatch, I forgot to mention. Now that you own it, make may make you cringe pretty hard. It was tough and weird to watch. I don't know what to expect with it. I just think it's odd because that was what that came out what 74, 75, 76, mid seventies, somewhere around there. And it was just weird when George kind of split ways with the latent image and Russ and John and all those guys, they kind of went in just two separate directions. Like George went off and, you know, met up with Rubenstein and they started doing the sports docs and stuff like that. And then like the latent image guys really were just like, fuck it. Let's just make porno. Like, <laughs> like what, what's the easiest thing to fucking sell? Like, let's just make some soft core porno. Fuck it. And George has never been one to like use sex or anything like that to sell his film. So it's, it was just weird. They kind of took two different pathways. Um, once they split up, um, see Blake says I was one of the prisoners. I walk out of the cell and camera follows me and looks over my shoulder as warden talks. I got the classic page flip and it says early, early next morning on me. Okay. I'll have to look at so let me see. Let me go back up through the comments here. What season did you say? Episode of Creep Show season three, directed by John Harrison. Okay, I'm gonna look it up for you. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna watch it. Uh, the Creep Show series is one I really I've I've seen like bits and pieces of. I've seen like different episodes here and there. Like if I hear of an episode that's getting a lot of talk online or a lot of people are loving it, I'll I'll seek it out. But I'm just not big on, on TV series. Like I'm trying to go through and watch the Tales from the Dark Side series now because I've never actually seen the original Tales from the Dark Side TV series. And uh, some of them are really good. Some of them not so good. Um, but I'm just I'm just not. Uh, it's tough for me to watch TV. So I'm, I'm, I'm just a movie guy. Like tell me a story in two, two and a half hours and just let it be like it's hard for me to I, I, like very few like maybe the sopranos i got really into i watched uh, the entire series of that breaking bad like the greats you know but it's hard for me to settle in but yeah i'll definitely i'll definitely check that out season three uh, episode directed by john harris i'm gonna look it up i'm gonna watch it i'm, I'm gonna see if i can see if i can spot you uh john says i was also surprised uh region tony did explosives too and effects yeah yeah they were they they fucking did effects their uh explosive effects and everything uh pretty much all through the 70s uh from night all the way through effects kind of they 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 worked on dawn as well um did they do the effect did they do the uh gunshot effects and stuff on the crazies if i remember correctly <clears throat> and they played the um the two bums and martin that that martin kills too in the in the old garage or whatever it is so yeah, they were always around. I always loved hearing stories about them because I, I can't remember. If, I think it's Tony who always had the cigar in his mouth and he would be like lighting, a, setting up a fuse or something like that for this huge explosion. And he's just got this fucking cigar smoking, <laughs> hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, working with this, you know, working with, you know, always love that. Okay, I'll bite. Okay, okay, I'll bite was the episode. Name of the episode. Okay, with Spider in prison cell. Okay, okay, I'll bite season three. Look it up, man. Directed by John Harrison. Very cool. That is super cool. I'm glad to have you in here, man. That is really cool. John, I think it gives you a good idea of who John Russo is. Yeah, I mean... It... I could go off on a big tangent. I'm, I'm going to have to get off here soon. It's already 1 o'clock in the morning over on the East Coast. But uh, John, John's a nice guy. He is. I mean, we talk to him. He's a nice guy. But man, what he's he's such carny. He's such carny. <laughs> he's a nice guy, like I said. But man, and Ru yeah, I mean, because I mean, you think what Santa Claus? That was just basically softcore porn. I mean, he was doing that Scream Queens Illustrated with Bob Michelucci. 
which was basically just a softcore porno mag. Um, I just think, I just think, I, you know, I'm not to say that he's like a fucking dirty pervert or anything like that, but I just think he just kind of went with lowest common denominator. What's most likely to sell, what's going to make the most money. And I think that's kind of the direction that, that Russo goes more so than just artistically or whatever. I mean, that, I think that's why we got, you know, night of the living dead 30th anniversary edition or whatever the fuck you want to call that, that they did. I I think Russo just kind of goes with the flow and whatever's going to make the most money. And, it, you know, and that's kind of why they did Night of the Living Dead at first. Cause I think George originally, the originally George wanted to do, um, uh, fuck, I fucking lost my train of thought. George wanted to do wine of the fawn. He wanted to do like a period piece drama type movie. And it may have been Russo's idea to kind of say, hey, maybe we just need to do some, what's most pro what's, what's going to sell? Like, what can we sell easily? And he just kind of, oh, a horror movie. That's perfect. Um, so, I mean, maybe that's Russo's way of thinking. And maybe that's kind of the way of thinking that Romero needed at the time was kind of somebody to say, let's not do this period piece. Maybe let's do something a little smaller and something a little more marketable. And, uh, you know, we got Night of the Living Dead. So maybe, you know, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Uh, synthetic says John Russo just seems <laughs> seems to like a lot of sleaze. Yeah, like I said, I think it just comes down to you know lowest common denominator, easiest way to make a buck type of thing with with John Russo a lot of the time. Uh, John said they weren't in Dawn, but they were in the Crazies and Martin. That's right. Dawn was uh, oh what's his face who kind of I guess kind of gets a uh, uh Look, who 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 is the guy that was in charge of the explosives and shit and Dawn? It's it's blanking on me now. It's it's getting late. Oh, fuck, it's right on the tip of my tongue. What's the dude's name? Uh, D Don Barry, Don Barry. I think that's Gary. Yep, Gary Zeller and Don Barry. Gary Zeller is the one I was thinking of. Gary Zeller and Don Barry. I thought, if I remember correctly, it was like on that, uh, I think it was on the UK second site where I think they were talking about Gary Zeller. And I think if was it Tom or Tasso or somebody was talking about how he kind of, they kind of, I don't know if he quit or just stopped showing up like near the end of the shoot or something like that. Cause he didn't, I, I forget, I forget the story, but there was something going on there with, uh, with uh, Zeller and the, those guys. Uh, Blake says, I'm from Alabama while stationed at Fort Bragg. I got to go to a Comic-Con at the Monroeville Mall in 2001. Or at Monroe, at Comic-Con in Monroeville in 2001. It was so outstanding. And it was before it is because, before it, well, sorry. It's getting hard to read. I've been doing a lot of reading tonight. And it was before what it has become. And the mall still had lots of things. I would have loved, yeah, I didn't get to see, I didn't get to Monroeville to see the mall until 2001. I would have loved to have been there. First and foremost, when J.C. Penney's was still there. Uh, that broke my heart when I found out that they took out the JC pennies and turned it into a movie theater. Would have loved to have seen the original JC pennies, you know, the elevator, which the elevator is still there at the living dead museum. Um, so the elevator is still there. Um, but you know, there's still pieces of the escalator from JC pennies as you can see in the museum, but that'd have been cool. You know, the bridge of course, which I think is in the possession of, the Carnegie Museum. I think the, the museum in Pittsburgh, I think it's the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh actually is in possession of that bridge right now. Uh, they're not displaying it. Uh, who knows? It's just kind of, I guess it's just kind of sitting in a warehouse. Um, but, you know, like all the fountains and I think, you know, the ice skating rink went away in the 80s. Um, I'm not sure when they tore the clock tower down. That would have been cool. But yeah, they, they, I mean, as with anything over time, you know, you got to keep up with the times and, you know, upgrade, if you want to call it that. I, I wouldn't call it upgrading, but, you know, people like us were, <laughs> that was a downgrade. Uh, let's see, John, apparently Gary Zeller got fired because he ran down naked in the hotel during press day. Okay, I did not know that. <laughs> I have heard old stories about, you know, Savini and Tasso at the hotel during the shoot, like when they were shooting Night Riders and all the wild shit that they were doing with, you know, Nick Tallow and all those guys. 
but uh, I don't I don't know if I've ever heard that story about Gary Zeller. Well, that's interesting. Uh, J.C. Penney was still there with escalator and elevator. Yeah, press day was January fourteen seventy eight, but was already back at the already back at the end of the mall filming on George's birthday, February fourth. <laughs> Wow. I wonder what hotel they were staying. I've always wondered. I, I Probably the hotel isn't still there. I, it wasn't the Doubletree. I don't, I'm not sure when the Doubletree was built. But that would have been pretty badass. Because that's usually where I stay. <clears throat> that's awesome. I was there in 2006. Yeah, I, I envy you guys. 2006, the Pennies would have still been there. Um, a lot of the decor, I think, would have still been there. Well, no, when when did they pull a lot of that shit out? Like the lights and stuff like that. When was that? That was like mid two thousands, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I fucking waited, 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 and bullshit around until I actually finally made it there. And glad I did. When I, I it's if you're a fan of the film, like yeah, a lot has changed, and I'm talking, you know, mainly to you, synth. Um, if you haven't been there, a lot has changed. Yeah, if you, but I mean, if you go in, number one, the the loading dock area, that entrance almost looks completely identical as it did in the movie. It's amazing, and it's it gives it'll give you chills when you're walking through because it's just like I'm in the movie now. All of a sudden, one of the best things I was staying, you know, we stayed at the uh, the Double Tree, and um, and I, at night. We were up high enough, and you could there. We had a window that looked out over the Monroeville Mall. First, first trip to Monroeville to see the mall and, and go to Living Dead Weekend. We're staying at this this hotel window looking over the mall, and in the back you can see the hill. So you know, um, <clears throat> in the film when the the bikers are coming down the hill, you see the headlights and stuff coming down the hill. Um, in in my hotel room from my window, you could see all the headlights from the cars coming down that same hill. And it was just like, wow, it's like straight out of the fucking movie. It blew me away. Um, but yeah, a lot has changed. I mean, it's gone through a lot of upgrades, a lot, you know. But A, if you come for Living Dead Weekend, highly recommend taking Larry's uh mall tour because they'll take you back to like the the engine room, um, which looks completely the same as it did in the film. He'll take you up to the staircase, the, the stairwell that leads up to the hideout. That looks pretty much the same. I think they changed where the door, they they enclosed where the door used to be and put a new door in or something like that. Um, so yeah, take, take you can take the tour. But if, if you know the film, if you love the film, like you'll know them all. Like you'll, you'll just, you'll see it. Like all of a sudden, like to me, like I kind of tune out everything that's going on around it. And to me, in my head, I'm just playing out different scenes as I'm walking through the mall. Like, holy shit, that's where, you know, Tom Savini jumped over the fucking rail and landed on the boxes. And, you know, that's the hallway where they run down. And it's like, uh, you still game? I need lighter fluid. You got it. Like, you can just, you know, if you know the movie, you'll know the mall. I'll guarantee you that. Um, let's see where I'm at. And see, Gary got blamed for some pyro pyrotech safety issues in Dawn of the Dead and left the set from an interview I saw. I think that's the same interview that I saw. I didn't know about the the fucking <laughs> streaking through the uh, hotel lobby. Ice rink closed in 84. Clock tower, I think, was 87. Yeah, that sucks. That was even before I was even fucking born. So I didn't even have a shot. But the ice rink, when you go to the mall, where it's where the food court is now. Um, it's where the ice rink used to be. And it's like right across from where JC Penney's used to be. So it's kind of a, kind of a sad little area. And they lost the bird from clock tower. I heard that too. The skating rink was food court. Clock tower was gone when it was there in Maine. Yeah. Clock tower was gone. And where the clock tower was, there's now the bust of, of George, um, Chris Rockus did a sculpture, a bust of George, which now sits in that, uh, in that, um, that end of the mall where that clock tower used to be. Uh, John said, I think it was the Radisson. I read it somewhere. I think it's on Norman England zombie farm website. I, I used to frequent that fucking website all the time back in the day, the zombie farm. I was actually, this is funny. I was actually going through a uh, homepage of the dead again. Um, not too uh, earlier today, actually, I was looking, I was, you know, looking 
um, just just out of curiosity, going back through the forums and like trying to find like my old posts from 15 years ago to see like what stupid shit did I say back then, you know. I'll find myself doing, but it's actually funny. There are actually still people of quite a, not a lot, not as many as there were, but there are still people that post and are active on that forum on, on homepage of the dead. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, the Radisson, I don't think there is, is there a Radisson still in Monroeville? I'm not even sure. Uh, they pulled the lights stairs in 2004. Yeah. I thought that was a right around that time when they pulled all that out. Um, uh, synthetic, the changes are fine. I may still cry when you see it. I, yeah, I did. I'll, I'll tell you, like, I mean, <laughs> and I told my fiance that when we, we went, I was like, yeah, I, I may start crying when we, cause I've dreamed of this moment for 20 years now, since I was 10 years old. Like first time I fucking saw this mall, like I've dreamed of, and I told Larry that when I took his tour, I was like, dude, can, can I just have a minute like in this stairwell? And he's like, oh sure, man, take your time, take your time. I was like, I, I've, I've thought of this moment for 20 years. Like, I'm going to stand on this stairwell for some reason. It's crazy. I don't know. Yeah, dude, you'll love it, man. You got to do it. You got to do it. Can't say it enough. Uh, let's see. Daughter was a baby in Stroll in 2001. I point out places where she was now and that she's almost... Wow. Yeah, I for my first trip to Monroeville Mall, 2001, my daughter was less than a year old. And I have pictures of her and strive a picture of her holding a fake machete and Lenny Lee's head. Um, I have a picture, actually a funny, sweet, sweet story about her and, and Bamba, Nick Tallow. Uh, she's of course was in a stroller and, and Nick was kind of walking around, kind of talking to people. And that's the thing about it. Like all these people are not just sitting at a table waiting for you to give them money. They, they, they hang out, they go around, they talk to each other. They, they joke, they go look at the, you know, the vendors, they buy shit, you know? And, um, you know, by Nick walked over, saw the stroller, just kind of bent down, got, got up to the, up to my daughter and was just like, oh, you got it made. You got it made in the shade. Can I ride? I, can I, can I borrow this stroller? Uh, I'm tired. I need to, <laughs> I need to be wheeled around, man. And he was just so cool. I, I don't know. Just funny, funny memory. Of course, Sharon. I mean, Sharon's the sweetest woman in the world. Um, but yeah, it, it was it, the, definitely memories I'll always remember. I got a picture of me holding my daughter in the, uh, you know, in the control room, in the engine room. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely always remember that. <clears throat> I don't says I was never a member of homepage, but I remember jumping out of my chair when someone uploaded the seventy eight mall directory in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, dude, homepage of the dead back in the day. That's like I got suspended from school because I was on homepage of the dead at school in the school library and I think I was a freshman, freshman year in high school. I got called it. Cause again, like I mentioned earlier, I was the kid in the hot topic clothes and black and chains and fucking metal t-shirts and stuff. And so they always, they always had their fucking eye on me to begin with. So when they saw that I was on school computer watching uh, or looking at a web page called homepage of the dead, uh, they call me into the office and like, what is this? Are you looking at dead bodies or something? Are you looking at ways to kill people? I'm like, no, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a movie. It's about these movies that I like. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Movies. You're suspended. And the bastards blocked the home, the, the web page. Couldn't get on it again at school. Anyway, uh, Radisson's now the double tree, but I'm still not sure. Okay. Is it, is it the double tree? Uh right now, right across from the mall. I'm not sure either. Found Christopher Rox's old site on the Wayback Machine. What was what was that website called? I can't remember. Because uh, I know there's there was the WGON that Matt Blasey did. Zombie Farm, Norman England. Uh, homepage of the dead. I'm not sure who was in charge of homepage of the dead. There were so many back in the day. Um, what was the one I was looking at the other day? Actually, I love that these all still exist too. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at. Uh, so yeah, oh, zombie farm. That was the one I was looking at. But yeah, there used to be like georgearomero.com. He had a forum on there. Um, 
I remember the first like horror website I went to. I because I mean we didn't know anything about the internet, and I was just like, we'll just type anything and put dot com at the end, and something will pop up. So I used to do, I just did scarymovies.com and that was a website at the time. It was just where you could download like audio clips and video clips of like short little grainy shitty looking low res clips of Dawn of the Dead and Zombie Lucio Volci Zombie. And sh- I remember that. <laughs> Taking me back tonight, folks. Taking me back. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, okay, Blake Allen, I have to go now. Great talking to you, Kevin Blake Allen on IMDb, and I am listed on that creep show episode. Awesome, man. Well, I'm glad you stopped by. That that's really fucking cool. Uh, really fucking cool. I'm glad glad you got to do that, man. I'll check out your IMDb, um, and I'll definitely be checking out that creep show episode. I'm gonna have to point you out, but glad to have you in here tonight, man. It's it's uh it's been fun. It's been a long, fun, exciting stream. I've had a Yes, R.I.P. Nick Tallow. R.I.P. Bomba. He died. He, he, it's been over a year now. Yeah, back in December, December 2021. No, wait, wait. 2022. Yeah, 2022. It sucks. He died the same month. Who else died that same month? 2022 was a pretty rough year for Romero fans in terms of losing folks. Because I know we lost, uh, we lost Nick. Um, 2023, I know we lost, uh, Butchie, um, the biker, Butchie, uh, what's his name? Bill George. I think is his actual full name. Everybody, he just goes by Butchie. Uh, we lost him last year as long, along with Catherine Colbert. Um, she passed away back in July. Um, but 2022, we lost quite a few people and, and Bombo was definitely a big one, big one that hit hard <clears throat> just cause it was weird. Cause I had seen him, you know, at the convention earlier that year and, Still just the same fun-loving guy. It sucked. Really, I didn't know that Butchie died in a motorcycle accident. I did not know that. That's crazy to me. Which, I mean, I can't say it's surprising because, I mean, he was an actual biker from what I understand. But I did not know that. But, all right. Well, I sure appreciate everybody in the chat tonight. It's been really, really fun here tonight we've we've gone almost three and a half hours this is by far the longest i've ever gone straight on a stream but it's been great having you guys in in the chat going down memory lane reminiscing talking about dawn of the dead on home video and uh who knows who knows what what's to come with dawn of the dead in terms of home video releases here in the united states at least i'm I'm sure we're going to get more overseas because france germany italy japan they love they love them some fucking Dawn of the Dead. So there's always something coming out over there. But here in us here in the states, we're, we're kind of we're kind of shit out of luck a lot of the time. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, maybe Richard's got Rubenstein's got some up up his sleeve. But uh, we'll, we'll see. But uh, appreciate everybody in the chat tonight. You guys have a great rest of the weekend. Have a great week next week. Um, I will see you guys. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing next week. I'll probably be on here talking about something but uh but yeah until then guys been fun appreciate it have a great week and as always stay scared my friends